Throw Gang, we are joined by Fiddy's co-founder and co-host, Lauren Schlossman, and myself, co-founder and co-host of the Fiddy's, James Harris. Welcome to the weekly Running the Boys with today's full episode only available on Patreon.com slash Throwing Fits. In the five years that comprised 2020, we saw brands sell for billions of dollars, a reckoning for industry titans like Alexander Wang. At the buzzer. <laughs> Philip Pline, Gucci with the blackface, countless influencers, and so many others who... Lawrence, let's be honest. Yeah. They're going to be just fine. Sure. Of course. But they most significantly are. in 2020, we launched the only podcast that matters. And it is quite clear that this was the most turbulent and straight up ass year in recent history. Lawrence, how are you feeling as the sun sets on the year that was? Do you care that Gucci didn't get busted for blackface this year? That was like last year? It was this year. And don't what? Worry, it'll, be, it'll be next year, too. <laughs> it, will be, it will be just like, I mean, it's death taxes. And Gucci don't, doing blackface. Don't don't Jay and Gabbana being racist towards Asians. Yep. Gucci doing blackface. Uh, I feel amazing because we just did our accounting for the whole year, bro. It was a stress. We literally. I mean, well, first of all, we're not done yet, right? Well, uh, we but, but the main the die has been cast. <laughs> if the IRS is watching or this, listening, this is a parody. <laughs> this is a parody. <laughs> is a parody. Um, what is it? it every was a reasonable. Reasonable belief? <laughs> what is, what is reasonable this? doubt? Yeah, what is that? What's the term? I, uh, I feel really good. We sent out a beautiful, wonderful thank you uh, note to all of the patrons. Yeah, shout out to three people that then uh, exited. <laughs> the <laughs> They're like, oh, shit. Thank you for reminding me. Delete. <laughs> Eject. Eject OC cuz. Um, no, it's been a good end of the year. I think we're finishing extremely strong. It's New Year's Day, hence the hence the ch- the champers. Oh, that's right. Yes. You are listening. Happy New Year to, to everyone listening, to everyone watching. Hope you're still alive. Uh oh, pro gang. We did the Critics' Choice Awards, the mm. thought leader bullshit yeah. that, that people expect and want Nay, and need from demand. us. Demand from the only podcast that matters. And now this is the People's Choice Awards, exactly. and we turn to, well, we have the Throw Gang, right, who, who did this right. behind the paywall, and then we opened up the floodgates so to the, the unwashed rates. masses, the troglodytes, the gutter snipes. Yep. Uh, not that the results changed, and we'll talk about- oh, they did. Oh, they did. Yeah. Well- Drastically, in, in some cases, drastically. In, 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 in a few categories, they drastically changed. For the most part, it seems like everybody is on the same page. As far as what's good, yeah. what's ass, no, there's some surprises. There are some surprises. Yeah. There are some we're gonna go through all those, results. Yeah. But uh, I yeah. mean, first things first. Fit check. Yeah, let's 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 uh, kick it off with you, sir. I mean, the ho- our host this evening like at Chateau entire, Jimbo, like the entire year and the entire um, throwing fits core four. And I hopefully hopefully the throw gang get your hands on these. At, get them at Essence. Get them at the MoMA store. Yeah. Uh, Subies on the feet. Make the cipher complete. All day. Some. Anonymousism uh, socks, because sometimes my feet get sweaty in the Subaru, not going to lie. The Johns that I wore for the majority of the year. Or your your, the your John of the year, I think, is what you, you uh, mentioned because you like, crowned them. You no know, Grease Goblin shit. Uh, work from home life, the Stussy Sweats. And yo, shout out Kevin from Fantasy Explosion. The shout out Kev. Sugar Brooklyn Refinery Tea, the Holiday Pack, touchdown today. You love that. Um, yo, big things coming. And uh, yeah, <laughs> thank you, Kev. A little um, a burlap sack. Yeah, Arlagache. I'm What's, the Joker, baby. What is on the back? It's the Joker. Oh, it, it is. Li- it is literally. Oh, yeah, Scarecrow. Yeah, it's like a, it's like a burlap sack. It only gets softer with wear. I fucking you know, Lagache, my brand of the year. Uh, love him. And Cillian Murphy. That's who I was. Think- I was thinking of who played the Scarecrow. You're which is Peaky Fucking Blinders. Awesome. When did that last season come out? Was that last year, 2019? I'm fucking confused because yo the fact that Gucci did blackface that was 2020. Are you sure? Pretty sure, yeah. Fuck. It was. Dude. The, it was the. This well, has been the longest no, five do, years they of do a single year. They do blackface a lot. This was the sweater that you like hold it up no, over I, your face, bro. That yeah. was. I don't. I think you're wrong. I'm, I looked up fashion <laughs> scandals 2020. I googled blackface. Yeah. <laughs> um. Anyway, you went to your most searched Pornhub categories. <laughs> um. Exactly. And well. then Haynes Haynes boxes. What are you, Lawrence? What's your what's uh, and then sip it on a nice wine. Yeah. What are uh, we? An Argent. Well, that's well, from the, upstate New York. This is from Argentina. Right. This is the backup. Uh, yeah. Where do you smash the Argentinian? Yeah. Uh, Malbec. Okay. So I came in. I wore uh, cooked blundstones to the crib. I have Ame Leondor socks on. I have on Carhartt uh, double knees. I'm seeing double here. I'm seeing eight fucking knees. double. I'm seeing fucking four knees over here. Actually, eight knees, right? When you count your own knees. It's a Simpsons oh, joke. Oh, okay. Got it. Uh, <laughs> wife, uh, moleskin, wife pearl snap. Wife? Uh, in that nice emerald. Tucked. Shirt. 
shirt of the year. Tucks. Yeah, well, you know, I'm you know, I keep that thing fucking tucked. You tuck your moleskin? I tuck my moleskin. And then I have That's on a Western hydrodynamic research hat. Shout out the homies at You're in full WHR. Flow. No, not full flow. Partly flow. Uh, 66% hat. flow. 66% flow. And then I wore my uh, new uh, <laughs> Nupsy Hustle North Face. We got the bro tote chilling in the foreground, packed with That's the background. Packed <laughs> with some fucking <laughs> blanks. <laughs> packed with some. Yo, 2021 big things pa- coming. Pa- packed with some fucking spicy Johns. You know. Shout out the fucking homies at EG and Barracuda. Chris Carrado specifically yeah. for the flow. James and I can match now. Uncle Junior's uh, grand- grandson. All right. Um, let's check drink check complete. Yo. Yeah. Like we said, welcome to the first annual fitties. Almost 5,000 people That's, Is that a lot? Did, does that feel like a lot to you? So here's the thing, right? We always underestimate ourselves, I think. To me, the, I would have been embarrassed if we hadn't cracked 1,000. Yeah, sure. Of Votes. course. And I think this we is have, like, I mean, we yeah, have what, almost 3,000 patrons. Once course. again, we underestimated how fucking fire we hear. I mean, that, that, that's history right there, you understand? That's history right there, you understand? Yeah, um, that is. I mean, we had some super interesting results, some expected, some fucking left field, you know, surprises. Everyone knows that you and I, we are nothing if not data wonks. Sure. Moneyball is our favorite uh Oh, yeah. Movie, our fa- our, so. It's our favorite Jonah Hill Academy nominated role. That's not Wolf of Wall Street. But 5,000 people. So, like, yo, props to everyone that voted. And, yeah, thank you. Um, I hope you had fun. And I hope that, like, you weren't too upset at, you know, missing nominees. There, there, and we'll talk about a couple, like, late entries um, and, and some shit in specific categories that didn't make the cut because just because you think your taste is good doesn't mean your taste is actually good and i will say if we ran this on like if it was a twitter poll or an ig poll i think more people would have voted but you're just so limited in the amount of options like twitter you can only do whatever is like four and i don't know about ig and as everyone who voted in the 50 saw there was like a lot of options in every category some like yo fucking tv show Oh my How god! How many fucking shows? That was like was uh, that like twenty I think, shows? I think, it was like tw- I think it was twenty, maybe yeah. twenty-five. So yeah, let's so, get into it. So yeah, you know, let's la- just let's just do it, lady and gentlemen. Uh, mm. If you're listening, and for the ten dollars patrons yeah. and those that waited three weeks for your viewing pleasure, what's up? Here are the results of the first annual twenty. And we're gonna build fitties. up, right? We're gonna we're gonna build exactly. up like the Oscars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Uh, let's start with collaboration of the year. So in last place, <laughs> we're gonna go last to first. Your boy. Big Scorp, Drake X Nike for his certified lover boy and Nocta, which came late and was like a right. little underwhelming, though, you, though you it would, did sell out. You would think recency bias helps in, 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 in oh, you would absolutely. think sometimes. Absolutely. And I'll also say, just generally speaking, Big Big Scorpion had a dismal fitties yeah. <laughs> for the most part. Yeah. Um, which made me happy. <laughs> yeah. All right, let, let me just run through it, uh, you know, yeah, okay, and, and okay. drum roll up to the winner. So in last place. <laughs> wiping up the rear drake x nike then we had supreme x yoji yamamoto sama yeah uh after you know doing slightly better than supreme yoji is louis vuitton squared which is you know louis and nigo uh they had they had some fire footwear yes then fear of god x zenya uh-huh then gucci the north face which was probably the last collab that touched of the year down yeah of the for sure year. That you and I shit on, but still came in one, two, three, fifth place out of like I don't know eight or yeah. nine. Very middle of the pack though, because we're we're looking at the percentages here. Yeah, yeah. Like that's you're, we're talking about six point four percent of the vote. Ladies yeah. And then gentlemen. then we had good. Uniqlo plus J. Mm-hmm. Um, Underrated, I would say. Absolutely, it, it was a bit of a small and like I think like it was a bit of an underplay. Yes, collab for sure. Well, it's just like but Jill huge, Sander. Huge. It, it's it's minimal. It's uh, kind of you know low key by nature. That's like her design aesthetic and even though like you and I could sing the praises about how the details on those pieces and and versus what they retailed for like it's always going to be arguably maybe the best value cop that you're ever going to find the most design bang for your buck uh really kind of up there with Uniqlo U which is which is uh La Mer and Uniqlo but uh yeah plus J 11 percent all right first first runner up for the top three we have Travis Scott X McDonald's. This this is this was uh, an entry that and, and you and I were like, okay, if we open this up to the public, is there a way for the haters and the losers shook on the troll. of sadly of which there are many to kind of hijack the fitties? You were shook on the trolls, and I was like, Lawrence, and no one's destroy- gonna fucking hijack 
The fitties <laughs> and, and, and troll and ruin the integrity of the fitties, of which obviously we know we're trying to set the bar extremely high. But I will say that this was not even tracking until no. it was opened up to the public. So yeah. the patrons uh, are our heroes, our best friends behind the paywall. This was yeah, not right your thing. fault. This is not in third place because of y'all. This is thirteen point eight percent of the five thousand voters. That's substantial. I don't, I don't, I'm not a math man. Um, and, you know, I, I got 800 on the I will say that my pitch when we were doing this, when we were putting together, I was like, we should do Travis Scott times everyone because he did Byredo, PlayStation. Yeah, but that, 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 that makes it unfair. But whatever. So, but, so it also kind of, I think it depends how you define biggest collab of the year, right? Yeah. Like I think that it's your, either your personal favorite or well, what that, you think is truly like the best quality or what made the most noise. Which how do you think people was, voted? Because when we did the Critics' Choice, we were like, yo, it was all about favorite. That's how we were grounding I don't know. It. I mean, that, it, that's what's interesting. Again, as as, da, as data wonks, as uh, yeah. you know, data, data men, I think it's uh, we don't have the the the, the foci, the foci uh, provided to us <laughs> just yet. we got to get more sophisticated. Okay. Maybe we'll go beyond a Google survey next year. <laughs> yeah, we should. We'll do yeah. uh, MailChimp. All right, so third place, Travis Scott McDonald's. And yes, it was in a... It was like in the in the lost in the pack, and then once we opened it up to the to the unwashed masses, to the smooth brains, mm-hmm. um, it definitely shot up. And I think that it does speak to looking, knowing how the rest of the fifties played out. I do think people were voting it as like, "Yo, this made this was the biggest clap of the year. It wasn't the best, but it was certainly it was huge. made the most noise." I mean, you know, like I will also say that, uh, and we'll get to how Travis did in these other categories like uh, Sneaker of the Year. His dunk is obviously a part of you know uh, our Sneaker best of the Year poll. And then Best Dressed Celeb. I think that this is kind of like when a movie is nominated for a good amount of categories um, and ultimately kind of underperforms, but maybe takes home Best Supporting Actor or best you know cinematography, cinematography yeah. right? It's kind of like, and even though this is third place, this seemingly, without no spoilers, using the movie analogy, but this was people maybe throwing Trav a bone because the influence, whether you like him or not, even though I think he's a fucking baby who thinks Santa Claus is real, <laughs> he is influential. Uh, whether or not you uh, subscribe to that influence, that's up to you. All right, in second place... Which I think was... Also, this is a nice little war room setup. Oh, yeah. Also, please don't uh, unsubscribe from the Patreon so I can upgrade my 16-year-old yeah, laptop. Yeah, speaking of fucking babies. Look at <laughs> yeah. Oh, where's your Joy Division sticker? Uh, oh, well, is that a weed leaf? <laughs> this is just me controlling the narrative before the narrative <laughs> controls me. Yeah, what is that from? That is a weed leaf, though. That is, yeah. Matches my socks. Matches my Huff socks. Yo, R.I.P. Cool. Huff. R.I.P. Uh, Huff. Yeah, Another big. casualty of 2020. We should have done the most lit deaths Yo, I was thinking of biggest legend of the year, but then, you know, Kobe's going to win. But there's a maze. There would have been a lot Pop of Smoke, people. Chadwick Boseman. Just fucking Pierre Cardon. Yeah. Nice pronunciation. All right, second place. Ame Leon Speaking of French pronunciation. With Drake's, what do you think? Was this this to the me only tie? The only Drake's high. that had a a good fitties. Um, <laughs> yeah, right. This was another collaboration. So the winner, which we're going to announce, was over half of the vote when it was just patrons. Yes, B- by, was, like a complete it the, landslide. It was, it was the, it was the uh, singular runaway category of anything. Of I, anything yes. before we opened it up, um, Amelia and Drake's made up a lot of ground when we opened it up to the fucking Larry clones. <laughs> That's what happened. It was people tra- love sweatpants. People it, love expensive sweatpants. It was tracking second, regardless, um, but made up ground and, and ate into the lead. And I think seventeen point three percent was the final tally. And I thought that was surprising only because uh, you know obviously ALD like Travis has a lot of entries on this list: sneaker of the year, brand of the year. And I think that of all of the entries, this is the one where I would have said they probably would perform the worst because I think that Drake's collab, while you know, we sung the praises of it because of how emblematic it, uh, it, it is of where menswear is going. This ha- idea of hashtag like menswear 2.0 and grown man streetwear, which we'll, we'll talk about later. Um, regardless of that, I didn't think that people would necessarily like cast their precious vote for it, considering, you know, the other things in this category. Well, and I'm happy to be proven wrong because this. I did not vote for this, by the way. I think. I think. Who did you? Did vote you? For? Did you vote? By the way, I was I wanted to. You I did vote. Okay. Um, I did. As I, well. I do think this is. The, I voted for the winner because it was because it's the clear it's, winner. It's the winner. I voted oh, yeah. for. I think that this is the. Uh, this is on the galaxy. This is on the galaxy brain end of the spectrum in that it is kind of a low key. Like if you know, you know. Again, like if you're a visionary and you f- you fancy yourself a futurist and you think that this is the direction things are going, right? And if you fuck with the pod. 
you know that we fuck with Drake's. You know that some of us fuck with ALD. Um, that being said, the clear winner, yeah, no contest, which yeah. more than doubled second place voting, yeah. and at one point was over half the votes, it when was. it was still like a thousand or two, uh, fifteen hundred or so. Our Lagache Workshop X Stussy, mm-hmm. far and away the collaboration of the year. Juicy Lagucci, the, the Juicy Lagucci, the Juicy Lagucci. 37.6% over a third of the five Dominated. votes. Dominated. And this, again, is the still the most dominant win of any category. And I think this is... I mean, you could say this about Travis McDonald's, but also like ALD Drake's. This is uh, two parties came to the yeah. table and like, this is what we can provide. This is what we can provide. All right, let's fucking link up and mm-hmm. have a sexy baby. Absolutely. I think that... When we're, when we're breaking down why, like the science, you know, as Dadman, the science yes. of why this is so successful, when we get to trend of the year later, think about how many trends this kind of hits on to some yeah. degree, wow. right? I didn't even think about that. Grown man streetwear, uh, sustainability, yeah. vintage, upcycling. upcycling, upcycling. Sure. Uh, so I think that- Even some gore, because it's meant yes. for the beach, which is, it, which is an outdoor activity. Exactly. Uh, so I think that this- And 90s tailoring. Yes, 100%. I think that this, more than anything, this is an unimpeachable win. I don't think yeah. that, um, and, and I think that the data reflects that, um, you know, the majority of you made your voice heard that, that we're not, well, at one point the majority, but ultimately this, without a doubt, was, I think, a top-line banner uh, throwing fits universe moment of the year because these are two brands we absolutely fucking love. We had Yokomon and we all we did was talk yeah, about the collab. Exactly, exactly. And even with Chris Green, it almost got a reprisal, yeah. you know, as far as the dick sucker is concerned when we had Chris Green on. So that is collaboration of the year again, just real quick. Top three, the winner, our le- our legacy workshop X Ducey, followed by ALD X Drakes, and then in third was Travis Scott X McDonald's. And not that far behind, unique low plus J. And then, okay, and then you kind of see like a steep drop off. Yeah. All right, let's get on to sneaker of the year. <laughs> we are believers, if not founders, if not the Elon Musks of the post sneaker world. So bozos. That being said, sneakers obviously near and dear to our hearts, to your hearts. Um, starting from least popular up to the winner, in last place, dead last, like with substantially a pathetic. <laughs> And prophetic 0.3% because these guys did not have a good fitties. These guys, <laughs> this brand was the Travis Scott of brands. And I'm fitties. sure they are so concerned uh, with, with these results. But, I mean, to be fair, I do want to, you know, I think we have to caveat everything with like, yo, the throw gang is, again, to, uh, this is oh. the Argentine. This is, <laughs> uh, they are to, you know, the right down. of fucking smooth brain, sneaker, fucking hype sheeple right we do we do believe in the post sneaker world we do believe that we are uh east and west coast media elites um this is all the throw gang and yeah i think it's like yo we're not gonna be suckered into your fucking sure. drivel james jebbia so in <laughs> last place with 0.3 percent of the five thousand votes supreme nike the air force one with the small logo and and this is a bummer to su- not because i am a supreme stan uh, a james jebby acolyte which i am you have uh, his email address uh, i do have his email address we have talked before um, <laughs> on email i on email i will say that i when this listen this is in dead last by a substantial margin clearly nobody fucking cared about this but i will say that let's not let these results affect how important and interesting of an actual collab this is for a variety of reasons. Snooze. One is that... No, no, no. Think about it from an economic perspective. There, there are sneakers... We're data men. We're not... Well, we are money men. We are absolutely money men if we're not, if we're, if we're not anything else. Uh, this is a shoe that uh, obviously has an exclusivity attached to it because it is Supreme and there is the box logo, but this is something that is going to be available like Supreme Hanes, like Supreme Jeans, that regardless of season... Regardless of you know who's what what fucking collabs are rising and falling in America, this is something that is always going to be available from Supreme, right? It is always going to sell out, and they are going to eat on this shit forever. And that is why it is such a fucking genius move, and to me proves how Supreme like doesn't matter that no one money. fucking thought this was right. cool. What, this what, is was something it, was that will first... put asses in the seats and put dollars in the register. 
fucking for years to come. Was this the AF1 that were they just like, yo, like it's there's you're not going to have a, a problem getting this, right? Well, so that w- that's part of it, right? The the and no one knows the true supply uh that when it, like how many pairs are actually available oh, so this every was, season. I think this was early in the year. This was and it was. was you know, it was so it September. It, I looked, it was yeah. September. They dropped oh, in September. So it's late in the year. And this is not exclusive like a lot of these other shoes, right? Like you very well will never see again for the most yeah. part. Or at least you might see the GR version like for some of these new balances, but you'll like the 550, which, you know, obviously Ame brought back, but you're never going to see those colorways available again. This Supreme Nike Air Force One, this is the last point, like, and we can continue to move on, but, like, this is something that will always make money for them, that will always be available, and it's available in much bigger quantities than people probably yeah. think, and compared to what's on this list, and, yo, that's a that's a lot of money. When you actually sit down and, like, think about the math Absolutely. on thousands of pairs, that's, like... That's why Supreme is worth two billion dollars because it's shit like two point one. All right, let's 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 run through the list and then. Sorry, uh, break I'm, it down. Done. So, I'm right. done. I'm done. I'm done. Last okay. place, Supreme Nike Air Force One. Next up, one point seven percent of the vote. <laughs> Pathetic. Travis Scott, Nike Dunk. Trash. Then, kind of a surprise, Off White Jordan Five. Above that, we got the Stussy uh, Nike Air Force. This was low because this was this new was and people were fucking with this. But the, well, the, the hemp joints. Then we got um, the Off White Jordan Four the sale, the sale. Joint, which a lot of people liked. That was nice. Then the old tied with also two point eight percent of the vote. Uh, the only non collaboration that we have on the sneaker of the year list is the Yeezy Foam Runner, and the only Kanye sneaker that made it onto uh, our Fitty survey, which was Complex's sneaker of the year. And um, I think this, this, and listen. Kanye, uh, while he didn't fare great in the fifties, and I think his influence <laughs> has definitely absolutely Don't spoil waned, of the year. and uh, absolutely he is not kind of considered because the music is trash and the politics are trash, so he's not held and considered in the same esteem that he might have been in the past. Um, this was kind of a game changer, and I think you know the comp- complex putting it at number one, its popularity. I think the fact that. Um, even if you you guys like you and I would never wear it, it's like interesting yeah. and it's 3D printed and you know there there's interesting things about it. I actually thought it would do a lot better than it did. This to me yeah. it was surprising how low it. This two, right. it got 2.8 percent right above the he's, the, right above the Easy Film Runner, the first appearance from you know personal one of our personal brands of the year, really New the Balance. sneaker brand of the year, um, no doubt. The Snow Peak New Balance. I don't even know how to say this. Niobium Concept One, the three in one transformer. Joints. Yeah. Which Transformers. Like 300 and something dollars. More um, than meets the eye. A friend of mine has them. He, he likes them. Transformers. Above that, another NB collab Fire with Johnson, Ben Burry, the 2002R. I like those. That would seem low also. Then my honorary mention seek of the year, Stussy, mm. Nike, the Spiridon Cage. Yeah. With uh, just under 5% of the vote. And I will say, this had three colorways, so maybe you loved the fossil, like James. Maybe you loved that silver, like me. Maybe you liked the black. Either way, lumping three colorways, I feel like definitely helps. And you're going to see that with some of these other models, that even if they were exclusive collabs, the fact that there was multiple colorways definitely expanded that bucket to get votes in the 50s, in my opinion. Next up, the biggest baby sneaker of the year, the Ben & Jerry's Nike Dunk. Wow. Which, again, if you were to Trash. measure biggest sneaker of the year by, like, noise and, like, resale value, which is Ugh. fucking artificial and fake, then maybe this would be higher, but I think that people did... They're garbage. Uh, ...apply their taste level in this category. I hope Because so. next up is the Dior Jordan 1, which, honestly, one, two, three, four, sixth place, I was kind of surprised. I yeah. Be lower. Then, well, you know why? No one voting has them. Nobody right. has them, right? right? So it's like, what are you supposed to do? Right. Oh, let me vote for this imaginary uh, uh, not, this artifact of, of of everything that is wrong with the entire world. Then, in okay. late stage, it's a, it's an avatar for late stage capitalism. So I'm actually in, not surprised. In one, two, three, four, fifth place, kind of a punch to the dick is the our joint sneaker. The only here. thing we agreed on the double taps New Balance nine nine two. The first. 992 appearance on Sneaker of the Year, but like honestly, we thought it was like low key a, a sleeper banger. It undercut the hype, it it played for us, but I guess not for the 5,000 voters at home. Then we got the Nike, the Sakai Nike Vapor Waffle. This is high. We added this kind of late. We hit up Chuck. We were like, yo, and I think we talked about this on last week's episode, but he was like, yeah, this didn't hit like the first one hit. Right. He has a pair, he likes them, but this. Felt like it should have been this beloved kind of huge drop, and it kind of went out with a wimp or dropped with a whimper, not a bang. But yet here we are; it's top four. So maybe colorway, we're wrong. I thought the color was better than the first iteration, but the first iteration was so 
like so saturated that I, I was just like tired of this. Yeah. Uh, all right. So this is this this was fourth place. We're talking six point five percent of the vote, so not really that crazy. I mean, it really was a competition between the top two. So uh, the first runner up mm. in the two thousand twenty Fitties Sneaker of the Year. I wish we could have handled these in person. Yeah, what a shame. And uh, you know, I, these were the cock tease fours. Yeah, uh, the Union LA Jordan fours with, coming in at eight point two percent. The reaction when the leaks came out. That this is a shoe that definitely I feel like what the initial reaction was and then what the ultimate reception ended up being. Hopefully we see this with my boy Cardi's whole lot of red, similar thing. But <laughs> but but the noise around this at off off rip was that these were trash and yeah. that Union not only couldn't live up to the one, but 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 bricked the sequel so hard. But clearly, as we had talked about, I believe over the course of the year. Uh, the tide had changed. When you take a step back, when you when you don't when you when you take away the comparison to the thing that came before, even though that is context, it is a different shoe. This is this holds up, and this is a this is good money. I love this shoe, and the rollout really was cool. Do. Like you know, obviously, yes. like storytelling is now like you know so important behind any fucking sneaker or product. Um, you know, Chris Gibbs is the goat, and he wasn't doing Absolutely. this necessarily for, unimpeachable. Like, yeah, so I think the way they did it, uh, kind of like I wish we got pairs. <laughs> That too, and we and you know what? Can I just say because it's the end of the year, we put in a colorway and size request. Yeah, like, we took it. We took it as far as we needed to take it to get them, and they were we like, just never got them. They're like, oh, you know how Beaverton be? It's like, no, I don't. Richard, <laughs> Richard, what the fuck? Pictures in the mail. Um, all right. <laughs> yeah, pictures in the mail, but no shoes in the mail. <laughs> so the top two. Oh, this was great. I love this. A duel of for the, the ages. Fitties. It was a fucking. It was like the. You ever see like the subway race at Yankee Stadium? It's like, yo, is it gonna be the B or is right. it gonna be the six? This is a war of attrition. Neck and neck. I mean, multiple lead changes. Can I say when we were ta- so we on the episode that comes out next week? Should I say we're? Should I say who it is since we're behind? Yeah, sure. Yeah. So Josh Peskowitz, the fucking legend. Uh, we have him on the pod next week. This we were talking about the fitties as like part of the show, and this was changing in real time yeah. as we were trying to. It was a you know, talk about results. It, it ended up being a, a difference of 05 percent yes. of the five thousand votes, but um. It was literally, I was like, yo, this one's up the, by two votes. Oh, wait, this one's now up by three right. votes. It's crazy. And there was a clear runaway winner when it was just Patreon, when we opened up to the Smooth Brains. Um, the know, gap was were, closed. The gap was closed, and it became a fucking duel, like you said. So, runner-up, sneaker of the year, 2020 fitties. Ame Leon Dor, New Balance 550. Yeah. The retro fucking New Balance basketball shoe, which like came out of nowhere. Yeah. No one had ever seen this before. They smoked it. Um, your fucking mood board was just like saturated with right. these. And I feel like that that's an interesting thing, right? It was on every every Zood Borders fucking favorite Zood Border was was was, was, it was four colors, was, four colorways. <sighs> it might have even been more. Yeah, might have been might have been four. I don't know, four or five, whatever. Again, a wider pool, more votes. Uh, I'm sure, like, you had a lot of people like me that you like the fucking green. A lot of people like the gray because it was, like, that vintage gray that reminded people of, you know, the Jordan 1. Like the red. Natural gray that, that I think is coming out next year. You have the red, which had a wider release. You could buy that at, like, Trade and a bunch of retailers. Either way, this shoe, there was a backlash because, again, it was on your Zood Border's favorite Zood Board had this shit on it. So it was from fucking the, 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 all the way from Hidden down to your fucking, fucking nephew Zood Board. And guess what? Despite all that, despite all the bitching and the moaning of the oversaturation, you still fucking voted it number two Why is there with twenty two point six percent of the vote. Why is there backlash? Because people can't get it. So if you can't but get, it, get it, no, nah, I think with this, listen, I think that there was a there was more available than a lot of the other shoes and sneakers specifically, right? That we talked about on this list. With that said, when you see a shoe all day, every day, and it's thrown in your face and it's teasing you. And you're, and you're already thinking about all the fits you're going to wear it with. And then on drop day, you can't get it. It's very much how incels feel before they drive a truck into a crowd. This it's is, like, you know, you see fucking pussy all day and then you can't get any. What, bro, what are you this, supposed to do? You I mean, bring a fucking, that, that's a bring an point. AR to a fucking sorority house. That's a great point. And very, uh, uh, <laughs> that's also 100% correlation between sneakerheads and incels. <laughs> Sneakerheads are going to fucking start shooting up stadium goods. Chuck yeah. Duck, motherfucker. Chuck Duck. All number right. one. Number one. Uh, Jound. Yeah. X, New Balance, 992. The greens, the grays, the browns, whatever. Uh, we have, what do we have? The brown? We have the browns. Yeah, yeah. The green, the browns. Pesco, sorry, the, Pesco the, the, was talking the about the green. The 
and Pesco has the green. Yeah. Do you think people were voting for green because it was the year of green when they probably when they, when they casted the vote? You think that's I mean, what there's nobody tell. Of? Like we're 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 data men, but like we weren't sophisticated enough to like we're not codes men, right? We're right. Like uh, sure, we can't we don't we, we can't insights. dig deep. We can't dig again, deep enough. This was one that was I think it had like a full quarter or third of the vote, and then once we opened yeah. it up to five thousand voters, then ALD really caught up. Caught Absolutely up. sure. Um, well deserved, honorable. <laughs> head to head, <laughs> fucking, you know. Yo, the year, I, yo, the year, of, the year of New Balance, without a That's fucking the thing, doubt. Right? The the data points to that, and then also let's three of the cl- three of the five top sneakers, New Balance. Yeah, and um, I and also the fact that there's uh more New Balances than than than. First of all, the fact that there's one Adidas on here, which is a Yeezy. Like, yo, Adidas, step your fucking game up. Uh, hire us to do a fucking collab, to do a shoe. Maybe we can fucking. Help your your terrible reputation. Just a thought. Please give us a lot of money. But even like when when you when you look at this list, like this was the year of New Balance, and even more specifically, the year of the nine nine two. I had a bunch of people hit me up about the Joe Fresh Goods nine nine two, which Chuck brought up, which we kind of dismissed. It's a little bit of a baby colorway, in my opinion. That was for NBA it's like some All-Star sorbet Weekend, shit. Yeah, yeah. Which, was which was early in the year. Early in the year, year, right? So it has, you know, so it, it, it definitely, I think some people forgot about it or felt a little stale. But the year of the 992, the year of New Balance. And honestly, I don't think there's a lot of fatigue. I think that we're going to see New Balance take this momentum into 2021, apparently. The, the 990 V3 is coming back with the fucking vengeance. You heard it here first. Yo, if, um, only, uh, if, if that's, only, if if that's only, the best 990, by the way. If only there was a podcast New Balance could team up with. <sighs> I uh, mean, shit, dude. Yeah. Fingers right, crossed. Well, well, look, I think we're two categories down. What's interesting so far, in my opinion, is that you're seeing the most hype brands. Louis Vuitton, Supreme, Drake. As a Off-white. Uh, Off-white. Stussy, Trav. Travis, at the fucking bottom of the pile, and I think that speaks more to like our audience, which, our guy, you know, smart, big brains. <laughs> um, all yeah, right. even when it's smooth, it's extra still large. Big. <laughs> yeah, it's still it's still big. All right, what are we on trends? It's like, a, it's like a yeah. All right, trend of the year, starting from the bottom, pulling up the rear, wiping up the rear. Um, sad rock star. Yeah, this is like Atlanta rapper, like you know, skinny jeans, big brands, head to toe, fucking Balenciaga, big sneakers, Amiri jeans, a lot of logos, even jacket. Chrome. I think if we had been, I'll say this right, this absolutely got this got one point six percent of the vote, absolutely got crushed along with with the next one, which we'll get to before things start to pick up a bit. I will say that if we were maybe more clear. Like some of the other categories, if we were like, this kind of includes Chrome, in my opinion. Yeah. This kind of includes, you know, some some brands that had good years. Maybe this would have trended harder. With that said, we were very explicit that like Atlanta rap and the stranglehold that it has aesthetically and musically on the rap game. Like this was your chance to kind of cast your vote and and and, and anoint these guys. You know, we're talking about what Gunna. We're talking about all of YSL, but Gunna, Lil Baby. Future, Lil Baby, Thugger. Um, even Cardi. Cardi, to some degree, even though I think, I mean, listen, if there ever was a fucking sad goth rock star, it was Cardi. But either way, while those guys definitely dominated rap caviar playlists, uh, their fashion influence didn't seemingly hit our guy like maybe it did other demos. Which is interesting because like you had uh, rappers are the new rock stars in like 2016. Yeah. When it, Uzi it, been doing it. it was Even like, Uzi is part of this. Yeah, is but, also Uzi, right? But We're that, talking about Uzi. I'm here. talking when it was like Kanye, Uzi, like Rocky, um, rappers are the new rock stars. Now it's kind of just like rappers like are awesome and still the, the best rock stars, but like the fashion shit just does not really translate. Yeah, S- specifically specifically this kind of paint by number. You know, listen, if if Amiri's are in the category, it's probably it's not over. It's probably not going to dominate Clive the zeitgeist. And yes, I think that's what we're seeing here. All right, next quiet. up, uh, it, just a, a slight lead, a 0.2 percent lead over sad rock stars are E Boys. This was the year TikTok. Yeah. I don't know if you saw me going viral. You know, every day on TikTok. <laughs> did you did you vote for E Boy in this category? No, absolutely not. Okay. Uh, um, I don't even know what I voted for. Gorp, probably. I don't think so. Oh, damn. Maybe Pretty Boy Swag. Um, <laughs> E-Boy. Which That's is like, telling. 
you know, pearl necklaces, literal figurative whatever, fucking nail polish. Yeah, uh, chokers. Yeah. Just fucking like, Jack Harlow haircuts. 2003 type Celine. Shit. I mean, this is Celine. If you right. wanted, if you, if you were an Eddie Stan, if you were a fucking, if you wanted to absolutely be on the wrong side of history and pretend like if you wanted to go shit and flow into had, your DMs. Had any fucking influence whatsoever, you would have voted for E-Boy and uh, you would have been wrong. You would have been in a minority because this shit got fucking blown. Yeah. Out the water. Um, doubling it at 3.6%, minimal zoot border, which, like, what is this? Just, just like, yo, like, you know, nice black tee, this nice is, jeans, this is, nice, this is, like, fucking this is sneakers. The, this is the vibiest corner in your apartment, minus 50% of the accoutrement, right. white walls. This is hidden socks. This is this is a lot of new balances. A lot this, of j- like the jowns. This is this is it's basically like jowns, some like light wash jeans. This is like jowned nice acolyte team. territory, yep. and um, this was something that I definitely was like, oh, we should include this. This was big on my timeline, and you were like, wait a second, just because it's like big for you, meaning me, you're like, is this really gonna hit? And I was like, oh no, this was a thing. It's your echo chamber, and it's. And there you go. Not I think really we could have done, done a better uh, job of explaining this, but I think that minim- I thought it was clear. I, I think know. minimalism was again on the fucking way out. I mean, I think not. I'm not. I'm not bigging up maximalism and like right. some Gucci shit, but I think minimalism is fucking stupid. There's like, somewhere like we sterile. can we, we can be somewhere in between. Yeah, I think minimalism is sterile, and I think that when we get to the brands of the year, you're gonna understand. Like you're gonna see that like that shit was just not hidden. Next up, Grease Goblins, the Turbo Turbo Scum Work from Home Life, which like. This is legitimately the trend that touched everyone's life Everybody. this year. I'm kind of shocked that it was uh, fourth from last because yeah, trash. Whether or not this was your favorite, this was absolutely the most prevalent trend. Yeah. In that, like, you fucking were in sweats and a hoodie for most of the year. Yeah. So 4.1 percent grease goblin. And also, uh, when we did half of our, what we thought was going to be half of our only loafers that matter lookbook in this style, we definitely were being bullish, and yep. we were like, "Yo." So, you know, who knows how long the pandemic is going to go for. We should show... And also, you and I were wearing loafers with the sweats, you know, around our crib to the bodega. That's like bodega to the border. Yeah, right? sure. sure. And, and we were like, yo, this is cool. And I think those fits hit, right? Looking back, I think they were dope. I kind of... We also sprinkled in our own kind of vibes there. You know, you had the fucking beautiful mohair on. I had the blue collar stolen valor. But the, ultimately... The Cheetos dust across the chest. Yeah, the Cheetos dust across the, fe- uh, across the chest. I had the fucking... Dust I, I was I was, gir- I was literally gargling Funyuns. And and you you know we thought that that would hit and make more it would pull people over the line, yeah. um, maybe not so much. Fine, that's fine. Uh, next up, the complete opposite of Grease Goblin, sure. which was a surprising. The polar opposite it did pretty well, and I think that maybe we just did a better job of describing it. Pretty boy swag, which means getting those fucking sexy thighs out. Wearing those five that, inch inseams for sure. Wearing that lace so you could see some skin, maybe even some nip. Yeah. Harry Styles in a fucking Harry! dress. Just cute boys being sexy. You know, BTS, the K-pop gods. Yeah, perfect. 5.6%. Perfect looking humans. Um, This is something this that is I This is cute like, boys being sexy. Yeah, and I, I, I if, if the pandemic hadn't hit, I do think that I would have leaned more into pretty boy swag. You. In 2021, or 2020. Yeah. <laughs> Nips out, bitch. Yeah. Chest you out, you like with your arms. nips you with your nips out on TikTok as a 34-year-old podcaster. Uh, is it's how I get on Gosha Flow Team. I, I, and Wang Flow and Team. Alexander now Wang Flow yeah. Team. Protect I will life. say that I think that the biggest takeaway here for me is that um and, and this is a thing that happened a little bit earlier, well, at least over the summer and, and earlier in the year, I think relatively speaking, thighs out, five inch inseams, this becoming a viral trend that we shepherded yep. partly, wholly to the mainstream. That is a part of, 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 we kind of lumped that in under this Pretty Boy Swag umbrella, and I think that our guys were like, oh, if, I'm a, if I discovered 5-inch inseam this year, I leaned into it because of Throwing Fits, the only podcast that matters, the undefeated fucking squadron, I tossed my vote. I think that's why we got to around 6% on this. I think also... Uh, the, this, the inseams exclusively. This past summer was, this whatever. past summer was the second horniest summer of all time. The right. first horniest is... 2021. Ne- right, the future. Ten, uh, this is a plot of 10. We're all vaccinated. Yeah. yeah. You can um, see the end in the beginning, but which I think is you pe- busting. <laughs> <laughs> it's the cum going into my dick. <laughs> yes, dude. Episode title. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> you, you reverse busting? Oh, that's that's horrid. Put that on TikTok. That's um, mad funny. All right, moving on. Fifth place, which is kind of surprising. This is too high. 90s tailoring, because like 
Fear of God didn't necessarily do crazy well. And I feel like what besides like vintage and Armani, Jerry also who as a yeah, celeb, like, you know, did, as a celeb, he I didn't fare well. This is one of those trends that, like a fucking uh, like the magazine editorial world tries to make happen. Sure. Because like their advertisers. Francis are, McDormand like, on the cover of Vogue looking phenomenal. Yeah, but and you're also, not like, Francis yo, McDormand. Like, look at the, like, or like mood boards being like, yo, 90s Armani was fucking sick. Um, so whatever. Like Guilty. Big Hells. Yeah, exactly. But but then you we did talk about like Lagache going back. To yeah. The 90s, right. And, I think and, I think there's a it's, it's bigger than just fear of God and, and just fear of God. Zenia, and I think that this is something that maybe right. So we're at eight point two percent. That's pretty high, and this is something that you and I put put on here, kind of as a throwaway that you expect to do probably as poorly as like E Boy and maybe minimalist zoo border to some degree. If anything, I think that the fact that it's at eight point two percent. I think this is bubbling. We might see this kind of carry over and maybe perform better well, in, in it, 2021. It feels like a trend that you saw a lot in imagery and on like IG inspo. And, mi- and inspo. And then maybe you are going to try this when things open up and, you know, not the horny summer of all time when it's going to be pretty boy swag 2.0, mm-hmm. but like uh, fall 2021, winter 2021. Yeah. Yeah, get your when you move on off. from some of these other trends that have dom- that we'll get to that dominated the category, maybe you're going to be like, oh damn, right. Let me try a fucking you know giant raglan sleeve a line yeah. coat that feels like it could have been Giorgio in yeah. the in the nineties. Some baggy trout. All exactly. Right, moving on Pleated up. Needed baggy trout. Uh, the territory that you and I I think comfortably you know overlap. Grown man street. Wear, right. That's the Venn diagram. Which is. I kind of wish that we did a better job of like defining this, and and I think we should because you think I really so. Think the that, whole pot is defined. I really this. think that Grown Man Streetwear can like I was like, yo, Lagache's Grown Man Streetwear, and you're like, no, it's not. It's tail. It's like cut and sew tail. And I'm like, no, you can take it and you can make it what you will, and that's why I love it. Um, I, I don't remember saying that, but you're very drunk. Um, <laughs> Grown Man Streetwear, twelve point eight percent, third place or sorry, fourth place, mm-hmm. which respectable, but I would expect it to do better. Although Probably. the next three trends, I think we're. Without a doubt. Sure, there's no argument Trends there. of 2020, and hopefully at least one or two of them uh, continue on into 2021. Um, in third place, first runner-up, 18.8% of the 5,000 Fitties votes. Vintage and upcycling. Yeah, this is this is a positive to That's see. Great. This This is fantastic. I believe the term is you love to see it. Um, and I will say that some of the feedback I got in this category or that we got uh, throwing fits as, as a fucking unit was that this idea of conscious copying, right, right, should have been prominently featured. And I would argue that this is that, right? If you want to consciously cop, and I understand that the mindset, and, and we've talked about this a lot this year, the mindset is different than just getting vintage and just upcycling, but I'd like to think that that idea of trying to be more sustainable, trying to be more green, trying to be more conscientious, it kind of, I don't want to shoehorn it, but it kind of falls in here. So that would be my response to those people that wanted that maybe also, at a little bit more front center, this is where it's coming. It also bleeds into the next category that beat it. I think it, be, it bleeds into E Boy, it bleeds into Sad Rock Star. Sure. Um, it can bleed into Grease Goblins, where you're like, yo, I'm just going to throw my fucking, you know, Carhartt jacket and like go me from, in the look. Yeah, exactly. Um, I guess not really Pretty Boy swag. It can bleed into 90s tailoring. All right, Vintage Upcycling, 18.8%. We saw some breakout stars Nicole McLaughlin, Legache Workshop, sure. Reese Cooper's DIY project. Absolutely. Um, Next up, second place, trend of the year, 2020 fitties. Your favorite trend. Uh, what I voted for. Blue collar, stolen valor. Got it on right now, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> um, I think that, yeah, and, and you're right. These this bleed, is workwear, right? Wear, right? This is just workwear and, and, if you're not a fucking construction worker. Right, and I, th- and I think that blue collar, stolen valor really hits for me when it's um, – Coupled with vintage, right? Do you and think it, Kanye had anything to do with this? Like him being I think so. hard in Wyoming, wearing the fucking... And I, and I will say orange. that, and we'll see how he fared as the uh, one of the best-dressed celebrities later in, in, in the program. But um, I think that, you know, Kanye's been doing this for a while, right? He's been planning... This seed... Listen, there are few people in this day and age that can plant a seed and water it and get it primed and ready to fucking bloom and blossom and go nuclear like Ye. All the fucking bullshit and garbage about him these days aside, and he absolutely 1,000% has... He's the genesis of this. Yeah. At least with 
a lot of the fucking minimalist zood borders who also pushed this trend very hard, specifically yeah. in terms of washed out vintage Carhartt and pairing Bill it Seymour with Hoffman, dunks. Bill Seymour Hoffman at Sundance. Yo, R.I.P. to the God. Uh, All right, number one category. Oh, right. also, Blue Collar Stone Valor, Valor 19.4%. Big. It did big. That, and it, it caught up once we opened it up. It was caught a some distant heat. second to the winner, eventual yeah, winner, which, which held its lead. Um, Gorp. Yeah, this is Gorp I mean, won twenty on. best trend of the year for twenty twenty. Obviously, there's no there's no debate there. I mean, a what is there full, to say? A full quarter of the vote coming in at twenty four percent. It was, I think, upwards of thirty before we opened it up, and then blue collar stolen Bauer definitely caught it ate up. In. It ate in. It ate. That could away be a Larry Clone thing, a little bit for sure. Absolutely. Uh, Gorp though undefeated in no twenty twenty. I mean, what else is there to say? It's a mind. It's a it's a state of mind, right? It fuck is Gucci. A fuck. Fuck Gucci North Face. It's a state, state of, mind. of mind. And I think that um, in what was undoubtedly an ass year, I think that Gorp either... Um, Do you uh, think we see more Gorp in 21 I as think the so. world opens up? Well, that's up. what Pesco said. And not to no spoilers, but I think Pesco definitely kind of hit on it where he's like, yo, you might not see it exactly like you've seen it, but like it's definitely not letting up. And it's going to permutate... What is the word? Per, what is it? What per, is it? Permutate. Permutate. Perm- perm- permutate. It's gonna percolate. It's gonna. It's gonna percolate. <laughs> and, it's gonna mutate and percolate and permutate with a, a few of these other categories, and it's gonna become something that no, is that's... familiar yet new. And I, the point that I want to make is, in the most ass year, whether you fucking prescribe to Gorp as a mindset and actually like did your best to get some socially distant, active fucking you know steps, steps, in, steps in, or you kind of just lashed on it aesthetically so that you could free your mind while your body was fucking locked in a cage of despair and regret. Uh, this is, this is, this to me, there's, there's zero surprises and I what understand. Was your, what was your average uh, steps for the year? Oh, I, mean, bro, I went fucking, I went fucking bro. Oh, that's right. Well, uh, fuck. You How were, do you even do that? I'm, was I'm a the, boomer, this dude. This was the year that you, uh, you are a fucking tech boomer. That's what I learned this year. Yeah. Whatever. Forget anyway. it. Um, Let's move on. Okay, so Gorp, winner of Trend of the Year. No doubt. Fitties. Landslide. Yeah. In the uh, landslide. Let's move on to the most now. crowded <laughs> category of the year, which was like very, pretty competitive. Um, but it was definitely, I mean, what else was there to do in 2020? Except this was surprising, too. Watch this was, this was a surprising category, I think, across the board. I can't wait let for me, people to hear the results. Let me run through the list. Sure. Uh, bottom to top, and then we'll go down and go back and analyze. All right. Last place, The Great. Damn, you hate to see that. I love that show. 0.4%. The Good Place, another show you love. Uh, R.I.P., that show is done. 0.7%. Not that surprising. That's an NBC sitcom. Yeah, it's pretty It's pretty. Like, That's basic. gonna happen. It's a little uh, basic. Zero, zero, zero. Your shit. My shit. Drake's Drake shit. shit. <laughs> I feel like it, it didn't get... This is. I thought this would dessert. be like last. This 0. 0.8 is kind of high. Next up, Pen15. Season 2 was disappointing. It was. Not as good as first season. 1.2%. Lovecraft Country. Started strong. Got fucking weird. Didn't even watch 1.4%. Hey, guess what? You know what? Honestly, is this an example of HBO being TV? All right. Next up, Rami. Sorry, Chris Storer. Maybe come on the pod. Defend your your show. Uh, The Undoing. Big ass. Big Mouth. What the fuck? Big Mouth should have been like top five. Big Mouth, uh, 2.2%. What we do in the shadows, funniest show on TV, I, in my opinion. Uh, to, also, two point two. Next up, I would like to make a point. Comedies fared fairly poorly right. in this category, and we're going to well, get to some bigger hitters later that are in. And listen, how many were there? Twenty shows. So, like, there's like some that. comedies in the top ten, but for the most part, comedies didn't hit in terms of escapism. In terms of right. laughing through the tears of 2020, didn't really happen. Uh, moving on up, we got The Crown. This is low. Very low. Damn. This episode, this season sucked. The, the pomp, got, well, you had Diana, but the pomp and circumstance didn't fucking hit. Stance. Next up, the most, at, or the horniest show on TV, mm-hmm. Normal People. Yeah. Then the show that smart people love to be like, yo, it's, it's fucking dumb, but I like it, Emily in Paris. This is high, dude. People just love to hate this people, show that. But people hate that they love it. This had this had we're at two point nine percent with Emily in Paris. This is completely middle, almost exactly middle of the pack. Yeah, whatever. Uh, the show that grew your heart, mm-hmm. sixty nine sizes. Ted Lasso. Shout out Ted Lasso. Love that. Next up, Dave. Another fucking hilarious show that I think. And Ted Lasso too, right? Like, These are this is we're we're in this comedy dead zone. Yeah. 
I May Destroy You. Not very funny. Actually, kind of funny. Uh, <laughs> great show. Kind of flagged in the middle a little bit. And earlier in, in the year. So this is this has True, this yeah. doesn't have that recency bias. But uh, what's her name? Mich- Michaela Cohen? 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 Like, yo, that's a person where like you read about it and you're like, why am I not as talented? Legend in the making. Next up, BoJack Horseman. Oh, the depressed horse show. Yeah, great. Oh, cool. Of course, I'm sad. Then Better Call Saul. And this was a show that was not available to stream the, the current season mm-hmm. but i've seen repeatedly that this season season five was the best season yeah. of better call saul which is a big fucking gas show especially whether or not you're a fan of breaking bad yeah the show f- fucking slaps uh all right then emmy winner shits creek at mm-hmm. 4.7 final season kind of like the good place but clearly had a connection with people that a lot of uh a lot of other shows didn't have, and then obviously another show like that had its fucking final season where you expect right. emotions to be at an all time high, like with the good place. Just nothing hit like Shit's Creek. Shout out Dan Levy? Who's our Levy. friend? Levy. Who's our guy? I don't know. Eugene Tom Levy. Yeah. That's his dad. Yeah, so Dan so Levy. Dan yeah, Levy yeah. Dan Levy is the famous <laughs> one. Come on the pod. Dan Levy, our boy, who's not famous, who is on Home and Garden TV. Thanks for nothing, yeah. as per usual. Next. All right, next up, um, a late favorite of the Huge. core four. And get some of that. a great show, How To With John Wilson. Slapper. And this was, I don't know if this is like a latecomer or if it's just like too fucking weird to like hit the masses. This show... It's fucking gas. This is, it's not TV, it's HBO. Yeah. This is a weird, out of left field, sincere Nathan for you. Produced. Uh, sur- yes, yeah, surreal, produced by Nathan Fielder, executive produced by Nathan Fielder. Um, surreal uh, banger that I know Chuck loved. I um, love this Who is the most sincere person we know, which tells you everything you need to know. Uh, if you haven't watched this uh, because you're not aware of it or because it's it's weird, Tap in. Give it a shot. Give it a this, shot. This, uh, from what I understand, from a- all different types of people, myself included, you, Chuck, I hate, Chef, I hate, JB, my wife, who hates shit like this, everyone bro, likes I this hate, show. I hate uh, love letters to New York. I right. think they're too, like, sappy. saccharine and sappy yeah. and fucking dumb. Yeah. This was like, this made me really miss. Like, Your love letter Manhattan. to New York was 9 11. Because it, it, they deserved it. And 9 12. All right. Uh, Moving next on up. up. This is kind of high. The boys. Love it. I love this. This is 5.9%. I love this. And I think this is indicative of the fact that like a lot of our viewers are just like, you know, angry men who <laughs> want to fucking kill people. Sure. Um, shut up. Did murders. you so I binged season one and two as a package. And I talked about this a little bit last I week. I had a break. which affected how I think about the show and how I appreciate it because I got that big old one I got that one two piece. Yeah, I, I had a break, but also I I got a little disillusion where I was like, this is too like angry. It's pretty and, like, negative. Pretty incelly. Um, <laughs> it's a little too like obviously dark. Like it was a cool It's com- it's the dirtbag left show of the year. Yeah, it was like a nice commentary on like the fact that Marvel and you know well, like, Hollywood sure. fucking IP and franchises like dominates. That's like, even superficial. I think it's so like, critical of, you know, foreign US foreign policy and Yes, and it's like when you give good people power what corporations. Happens? Exactly. Yes. But it was also a little I don't know, a little too like Absolute fucking, power corrupts absolutely. It was a little too like, you know, college sophomore. Oh. What if Super pa- superheroes bro. were bad. Bro, do you ever see fucking Moon Knock Saints, bro? <laughs> shit is fucking... <laughs> shit is crazy, bro. Yo, Inception is fucking... <laughs> All right. Uh, Tiger King. Barely beating at 6.1%. Tiger King. I mean... I think first of all, first of all, can we just do... Carol Baskin. Carol Baskin. Carol Baskin. I mean, yo, this was a fucking... First of all, if you hate on Tiger King, you're a fucking bitch. You're a loser. You're a hater. Fucking all our ops are dead, but we continue to stay humble. Fuck off. This shit was must-see TV. Yeah, this was And this, is a, this was awesome. And yes, it's corn. Yes, it's basic. It's like the office of... Um, wh- I don't even know how to say... Sex- uh, psychosexual... Uh, violence with big cats. I mean, you know, it's that's what it is. My homie that works at Netflix was like, sent us the trailer on the on the main uh, home and group chat, and he's like, "Yo, watch this." this and we're like, hit. "We're like this. This looks crazy." Every fucking episode was like, "Yo, this cannot top the last episode." Oh my god, he shot himself. Yeah. On camera. Yeah. She got her fucking arm ripped off. <laughs> yeah. Jesus this is Christ. you listen if you're if you are hating on Tiger King and I get it like we I get think, it I think but this, if you're hating on it the problem is you this suffers from the fact that this was the first show of quarantine right. 
it was like March, I feel like, where... No, the winner of this category kind of goes uh, against what you're saying, but also suffers from some of the same shit from being mm. early. But we'll get there. All right, let's get we'll there. We'll get there. Next up, fourth place. Honestly, the people's a bit of a bummer. Yeah. This, this show, was, should, this show yeah. should have been number one. Uh, shout out Conrad. Shout out Mick. Mick, congrats on the set. The boys. Shout out the boys. Uh, industry. Industry gang. You know the favorite show of this podcast is industry. It's and not these guys TV. Are fucking pulling. It's HBO. These guys are pulling for industry, and we appreciate that. Um, yeah. I don't know who the cable guy is on Instagram, but he like... Shout out the cable guy. That? Great fucking meme account to follow. He was fucking promoting the fitties in terms of voting for industry. We had Conrad. He was hitting in the Instagram stories. Uh, the the co creator and Harper. I don't know. And, and then fucking Harper, dude. Well, I mean that. That's you, the that, that's the character's name. I don't know. Her. Yeah. That. But, so that's uh, yeah, so that's industry. not great on us. But yeah. shout out to her, shout out to Harper. She's verified in IG. That's cool. Yeah. Um, we industry. Love industry. Honestly, I think industry got it, it was a it was a late arrival. Mm-hmm. It uh, was playing out week by week on BBC, and so they couldn't do their press run until, like, just sure. now. So I don't think when it was available on HBO in its entirety, it is now appearing on all the critics, including the only critics that matter. Yeah. Best year-end list, including... Yeah, if you don't Rigger, trust... If Rigger, you don't, right? It was number one. If you don't Rigger. trust us, well, you could not trust Sean Fennessy. Shout out fucking Fennessy. Uh, this show... What did I say? Sex, drugs, money. What else is there? That's if you listen to this Rock show. And roll. Well, sex, well, sex, drugs, and grime. Se- <laughs> sex, dr- sex, drugs, and grime. All you fucking need. Yes, this is soapy. Yes, this is over the top. But there has not been a more bingeable, entertaining, um, spectacular form of entertainment that I have found personally in 2020. This was, I cannot recommend it more highly. Please tap the fuck into industry. This is really the only show I watched in 2020 where I was like, yo, I cannot wait to rewatch this. Normally yeah. I need like a fucking, like I rewatched Succession, uh, you know, season one and Sopranos, two. Like, you're doing Sopranos, Sopranos, Sopranos again? Yeah, but Sopranos was like, you know, that was like 20 years ago, but Succession To was be like clear, we're not comparing ago. industry to, to the Sopranos or, or are we? I don't know. Um, <laughs> all right. Rounding out the top three. First runner up with 9.8%. You hate this show too. I love, that's why I love I... it. I... Don't Did you like finish? This. Did yes. you finish this? Okay. I, I mean, I probably tapped out with like 10 minutes left. I was like, all right, this shit's over. Whatever Damn, she Give this won. man uh, a green bean. The Queen's Gambit. Yeah. Sexy chess. Sexy chess. I liked it. I mean, this was... this. this I liked a, it, but it's like, yo, is it top three show of the year? I don't know. This, and uh, correct me if I'm wrong, this picked up This picked up when we opened it up. No. This was no? always in the running. The next show... Fucking oh really? Distant, almost yeah. Lost in the pack and really broke out in the home stretch. I will say Queen's Gambit. I think benefits from it's a show that you can watch it with your wife. You can watch it with you know your significant other. It's I think on that, Netflix. Netflix is yep, the popular. Obviously, popular. the fact that it's bingeable, the fact that it's Netflix for sure. Uh, I'm not surprised. I'm probably less surprised as you are that it's so high because I watched it and very much enjoyed it. With that said, was it top three of the year? I don't Come know. On. Anyway, what? Let's get into the top. All right, two. number two. Uh, this is the show that was lost in the pack and fucking. St- I have never seen an. Fur- e- I've never seen an episode of this. Made by a the furious way. run at the home stretch. The Mandalorian. Have Mando. You, have you ever watched it? I watched season one. I enjoyed it. Oh, you have Apple. You have Disney Plus. I don't anymore. I canceled. I nice. started watching <laughs> season two, and it was too episodic. Where it was very formulaic. It was like, oh, like, yo, me and the child. It was. It, it's a. Uh, so it's like a procedural, but the, in terms the, of Star the, Wars, it's the sexy guy from Game of Thrones and Wonder, the bad guy from Wonder Woman 1984. Oh, that it's guy the, rocks. The Red Viper. Yes, 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 I like him. He's cool. So it's him. Oh, he's the he's Mando. He's Mando, um, and it's him and Baby Yoda, buddy cop shit. Apparently, Baby Yoda is not Yo is not the baby version of Yoda. It's right. Another, well, another. Well, I, I knew this. I knew that because Yoda lives. Lo, Yodas those that race, whatever that race is. They live for Careful. thousands of years. Careful. <laughs> so. Yeah, so I thought this shit was like thousands of years in the past. And they're Wait, bad drivers. I never... <laughs> <laughs> no, I Welfare Yodas. Yeah. I never got uh, to the point where it kind of like started expanding into like the greater... Not that I'm a fucking Fuck Star, Wars Star Wars virgin. Oh, no. That's the thing. So, but apparently this season was big gas. The also, finale, sorry to all the fans at home who are, who are the, Mando The finale heads. was fucking crazy, supposedly. <laughs> right, right. Whatever. Luke Skywalker, spoiler alert, Luke Skywalker and Baby Yoda fucking John have Favreau, a breakdance battle. John Favreau just watched uh, his cameo on The Sopranos, his little fucking mini story yeah, by yeah. Janine Garofalo. And, and, Th- this, uh, I, 
as someone who has not seen an episode, and listen, I've seen every Star Wars movie, even fucking the side missions, the Han yeah, Solo the prequel, one, which yeah. on an airplane that was not no, enjoyable. I didn't watch that, no. that was not good. <laughs> uh, but for the most part, uh, this is a. This is a. Listen, I don't want to be rude, but this to me is a very. So we're talking about the Queen's Gambit being basic. Star Wars is the most popular franchise in the world. This is as basic as it gets. But this, I think that this is this, the office for nerds. But I think that this was a breakout hit, and I can't judge it. I mean, I really enjoyed season one. I just could not get into season two. Season two was just very like, oh, like we're going to this planet. Oh, like we ran into this monster. Oh, we're going to kill him. Oh, we're going to the next Star planet. It's a Star Wars procedural. It was too episodic, but apparently I dropped out right before it started getting into like more of a, a cohesive An arc. arc. Got yeah. it. Right. Real TV shit. All right. 10.5%. Very respectable. Oh, yeah, let's place. do Queen's Gambit was 9.8% in third place. Mando, 10.5% in first place with 14.6%. Zero question. The GOAT. Yeah. The Last Dance. The Last Dance, Which, obviously. Right. I think that this is Were similar. you surprised by this? Yes. I okay. think that's similar to Tiger King in that it's like this was a cultural moment that really brought people It together. happened early. It happened early. June is when it came Yo, out. Yo, we were doing the Trey pod. We were potting with Trey. We were still splitting Blackout up. Blackout drunk. We were, still, we were still splitting up. We were like, hey, listen, you're a patron. How about the same pod except drunk we're blackout <laughs> drunk? <laughs> right. From the guys that brought you drunk podcast comes drunker podcast. I mean, that's how, doesn't that feel like a lifetime ago? Dude, that that's was, when this was hitting. This, this got pushed up to June. Yeah, right. So, because of the pandemic. Sure. So I do think Which that, we appreciate. Shout out, yeah. shout out ESPN. I do think that the, <laughs> shout this, Disney. the six month uh, nostalgic period people are being like oh my god last dance that was 2020 that was so fucking gas the memes Dennis Robin he went here I went here he went here I went here he went here, I went here Scotty fucking yeah. Steve Kerr John pa fuck Luke you Lawson. pay me Scotty Pip yeah bro uh, fucking you know that's that's when I took it personal I think that the memes are coming back around it I think that this is like the, the short term life cycle of a pop culture moment is the last dance is hitting again I meet someone, see, they steal my swag, they leave me. I meet someone, right? It's to see Last Dance memes pop, again, pop up again, and I think that people are just like, yo, like, I forgot that this was fucking... Ga also, basketball's back, right? Yes, so like, thank God. She's, she's gas. The beautiful game. Uh, I, I will say that I was surprised at first when this was running away with the category before we opened it up to the public and yep. Mando, uh, you know, fucking caught up. And I will say, I think that's because I sometimes forget that at the end of the day, right, we are the we are the only podcast that matters because we are everything to everyone, and we have a lot of enlightened jocks, former stoolies, some still, I understand, that fuck with us because we are able to synthesize all of the cool shit in a way that is digestible and accessible and democratic because you and I, if nothing else, are money men. We love money. But yeah. we are men of the fucking people. And the last dance, we're talking about Michael fucking Jordan. We're talking about the, the, the greatest of all time. No question. Zero debate. Of course. And, and everyone, we all watched this. Chuck was probably more tapped in than anybody. That man loves basketball. You watched. I watched. Chef watched. It, it, this is the number one show it's also, for the throw gang, and I, and I shouldn't be surprised, and I apologize. It's also currently available on Netflix and at the front of, like, you know, Trending yes. Now, uh, Trey. So I think that it is more, like, accessible than really anything else down here. Like, everything... Well, besides anything everything else really like on had Netflix. Everything really had its moment. Um, you know, Queen's Gambit, like, had a moment. Now it's been, like... Sure. You know, now no, no one's watching the Queen's Gambit tomorrow. Right. Right, I get that. No one's watching Tiger King tomorrow. And that's, and that's the difference between Tiger King and Last Dance. The Last Dance has... A life cycle that will live forever, just like Michael Jordan, just like the fucking Bulls, just like the fucking dynasty that they created, unlike Tiger King, which is more of a time capsule, unlike Emily in Paris, which is a dog shit time capsule, yeah. unlike, you know, The Crown. Which is like wrap Trash. it the fuck up. Let's let's get to the last season. Let, look, can Diana die? Yeah. Like let's just kill this let's bitch. Get to Ari. Let's go. Anyway. All right. Let's move on to musical artist of the year. Wow. This is a, um, this was loaded. This was probably the least interesting category to me. This this the the winner of this category, which we'll build up to, was winning after the first minute, and whether it was throw gang voting or opening up to the people, she never relinquished her lead. And while she lost some of it when the unwashed masses got involved, and we'll talk about how the results kind of changed, this was a stranglehold on the category yep. that never let up, which is surprising because of what you and I listened to, but let's go through it. 
All right, let me just run through and then we'll run back. Uh, 21 Savage, last, last place. place. Next Damn. up by 0.1% over 21, <laughs> the baby. Which, like, Ooh, I'm a rock star. Right, as we said, Mario Kinda Judah sucks. did the baby right. shit. I killed you on your own shit, dog. Uh, next up, Drake, third to last, Damn. which you'll love to see. Certified it. loser right. boy. Charlie XCX. Shout out Next Chuck. up, T Swizzle, oh, your artist of the year. That's tough, dude. I hate that. I hate In that, but I get it. Fifth to last place, which I think that's just that's just sexism straight up. Same with uh, Heim being you know three point eight percent. That's fucking sexism right there. Next up, little baby. Then we got. Fucking Playboy Cardi, yo, four point three percent coming in at the twenty fifth hour to return balance to the force. As I've been saying, what's your tweet length review of Whole Lot of Red now that it's been out? Because we dropped this before Whole Lot of Red dropped. I will listen to three songs very loudly, and that's it. And what I don't are, know what songs. And you I'm don't just, even I'm, know I'm not, any three songs. I'll listen to very loudly, like in a car or like in my apartment, like just you know, like turning up or like trying to get hyped up or waking from a nap, and that's it. Uh, I love it. It's so good. I think it's fantastic. Do a whole lot of skips. W- would I? Would I have voted? You know, I had already voted for uh, T Swizz. Um, would last I? Thing, last thing I'll say on, on Darty yeah. is uh, I hate that my favorite song I think is the Kid Cudi joint. Metam- Metamorphosis. Metam- three morphosis. Yeah, yeah, that one. I changed my whole sweat. Metamorphosis. All right, above Cardi. Wait, wait, no, hold on, hold on. So, no, I would not change my vote for Jordan, uh, my close personal celebrity friend, Jordan Carter. But I will say that the record, uh, I understand why people don't <laughs> like it. With that said, Cardi makes music for himself, and all of the shit. Shut the fuck up. The, the, no, let me say the music Cardi that makes music for himself. The, you, you guys don't get it. The it's mu- for Cardi. The music and that Onyx. The, <laughs> the music that. No sleep. The music that people wanted from Cardi would have come out last year to uh, if it wasn't for leaks. This is this is where he's at currently, right? And he's going to make music for himself. And it's uh, yes, the mixing seemingly is terrible. If you want baby voice, pissy pamper, bro, uh, Molly. All right, Pookies in private. But this is what it is now, and that's why just you know, eight people will like it a lot better. Eight hundred years from now. When I'm done world, caping. I'm done simping. 800 years from now, when the world is decimated and fucking is in the colonizers from Mars come over and they're like, yo, you know, want to study history. What was this term simp that took off in 2020? They're going to run this section of the video back. This is what, this is just unbridled simping. This is, <laughs> let this, 4.3%. You can't suck this man's dick for being a 2020 trap punk rock icon and then hate him when he delivers the kind of music that you have almost told him that you want to hear. Big simpin'. All right, next up, uh, Bad <laughs> Bonnie. Bad Bonnie. I don't listen to Bad Bonnie. So I, mean, I don't, it's I couldn't a vibe, say. It's a vibe. It's uh, a vibe. And then point Ari. over Bonnie is Ari. And this is interesting because clearly what people, what our guys, with the throw gang, wants from Harry Styles is not uh, watermelon sugar. Yo, it's... I, which we is were, about we eating like, pussy. Yeah, but we were like, yo, did his be music come out in 20... I mean, maybe this speaks to like 2020 where like time doesn't make sense. We were like, yo, his album came out in 2019. And it's like, no, it came out in mm. 2020. It came out in yeah. May 2020. That's a, he, had a, he had a banger single. I mean, watermelon sugar, as far as it's all the pussy. songs that about what's eating the, pussy what's that favorite, exist. What's your the, favorite song about eating pussy? What's my favorite song about eating pussy? For me, it's God, Rihanna, Rihanna Kiss It Better. Uh, it's uh, da- uh, uh, it's your, our boy, Danny Brown. Uh, pussy Tastes mm. Like Cool Ranch Doritos. Um, whatever not, that song is. That's not the name is. of the song, but it's... <laughs> yeah. Pussy Tastes Like Cool Ranch Doritos! Uh, imagine the song was Pussy t- Also, I'm going to write that as the outro music. Keep keep the show flowing. All right, next up, we got my guy. My vote for Artist of the Year, Little Jacuzzi Vertical. Uh, you know, Eternal Take Deluxe Album, Myron, which has the same... Sample intro as Kirby the Hottest White Friends. Look it up. <laughs> wait, wait. So you prefer Eternal to Take Deluxe? We agree. Deluxe, the Deluxe is better. Um, yo, so this is so honestly. You about to recite some Danny Brown lyrics? No, no. Let's talk about Lil Uzi Vert. Is at four point seven percent, uh, middle third of this category, and Cardi is at four point three percent, and is also middle of the third. The both of these guys, the people. Thought they underdelivered, right? That that the hype was so real around 
both of these guys, forget about the fact that they have their own relationship and have classics between them. And play play PlayStation 5. <laughs> yeah, nine in months like ago. February, yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. When when uh when when I'm Onyx surprised. was just was just a glimmer in Iggy Azalea's uterus. <laughs> but but the the fact that these guys who are I would say um pillars of the show of the musical tastes sure. of of young men in 2020, the fact that these guys hit just straight up, literally, I'm not in the middle of the category, straight up legitimate yeah. mids, I think speaks to the state of rap and, and where rap was in, I think also in 2020, which yes, is if I think you also, can't turn up to it in person, and this is not a new take, but if you can't turn up in person, is it ever going to hit? in your apartment, in your headphones, in the stairwell, like Fair. it would at Kinfolk R.I.P. In the bump. I think also you either you either hit or you don't. And there's no fucking middle ground. Like it's the it's the it's the trash or the not. Pol- the it, polarization it's of the trash hip-hop. or not uh, right. culture that we live in. Where it's like, yo, the, it, is right. this a is this a plastic or is this trash? Right. And right? I Which and it's very I, unfortunate because there's no nuance there. Sure. There's zero. And and while I might think that Whole lot of red is a classic, and you might think that, or classic, excuse me, and you might think that a whole lot of red is trash. Like, I'm not saying trash. No, that's the thing is, I I feel like pressure to be like, yo, it's a classic or it's fucking garbaggio. It's like, no, I like a few of the songs in there out of the twenty four thousand songs on the sure. album. Maybe I like three or four of them, but I don't even know what they are. Okay, moving on. Moving on. Megan the body yadi 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 yadi. GQ's GQ's rapper of the year. Yes, and I think five point one percent. I think that if our fans weren't sexist, which is not, because the female, the artist of the year was a female. Mm-hmm. Um, sh- I think Megan Thee deserves higher. I think that her album also underdelivered, especially the hype around her. But she like, had the, the Savage she- remix with fucking Grosh. Queen B, and and which WAP. is which is big. And WAP. oh, and WAP and, like, and WAP and body yada yada. I don't know the name of the song, but like uh, Megan Thee. Okay, sixth or seventh. Next up, Dua Lipa. This came out of nowhere for me. Came out of nowhere. I don't listen to Dua Lipa. I saw her on SNL. She is extremely attractive. As far as what do I think of her music, artistically speaking, I'll report back. All right, one, two, three. Fifth place, The Weeknd. Yo, no, and I said this on pod. This After Hours is good, and this man dropped... Listen, I don't think this, this record is a classic, right? And it's definitely not as good as some of... It's definitely not as good as House of Balloons, obviously. It's so but, pop. but 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 blinding lights and these are big tracks. It's a radio. It's a radio anthem. But he, but and but I do think he's fulfilling the prophecy of anybody of being the of just like Drake said, Mike Jack, the next Mike sure. Jack. I do like the fact that if he like anyone he, could ever do that. I do like the fact that he committed to like the plastic surgery shit and like the red suit. And he changes he- and he changes swag up. Like what 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 Cardi is talking about in Metamorphosis, which also is true because Cardi is now a gay vampire. The weekend does it. Uh, they thought it was gay. They uh, the weekend does it at a level of of a list superstardom. Right. We're gonna pour all our money into creative direction, and we're gonna fucking we're gonna go on fucking whatever fucking Jimmy Fallon, and we're gonna fucking perform a song in a fucking cube in real time with fucking mirrors, and they're gonna kill it. And obviously, a lot of that is budget, but he. I felt was the most underrated of the year, despite the fact that he is a Grammy winning A-lister. All right. Uh, Final thought. He was snubbed by the Grammys, no? This he year. was, but he was. But yeah. previously. I mean. and, he, and he threw a fucking bitch fit about it on Twitter. All right. He, yeah. the, the last... Won a Kids' Choice Award for doing cooking. <laughs> the last artist... <laughs> <laughs> the last artist outside of the top three, which is actually a, a trio of artists. Yeah, we, we, Zelda, lob, we lobbed this. We lobbed this. Benny the Butcher, Conway the Machine, West Side Gun. This was a 7.7. 7. 7. 7. 7. This, this is big. This was a little unfair in that it was... Boop, 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 boop. It was three individual projects. So if you fucked with one of them, you would have voted for this. Right? Sure. So but I that's, think that, that's what they're doing because... That's fine, and that's fine. They're like us. They're middle-aged guys that fucking... <laughs> from, pu- from upstate New York. <laughs> from, from, from fucking nowhere, from a cul-de-sac, that fucking... That popped... Uh, t- together, separate. Like, there's Jimmy guys, there's Larry guys. Everyone's a Chuck guy. Everyone's a Chef guy. But yes, I loved um Benny the Butcher's tape. Right? right. I thought that that fucking Burden of Proof was the best project of the year, and definitely the best rap project of the year. Other people probably felt differently. Yes, there was 
drops from all these guys, but they are a unit. They are a family. I mean, they're fucking literally blood right. relatives, and I don't feel bad that we grouped them together. And the fact that they only got fourth place, honestly, to me, feels and, a little low. And it's interesting in that, like, I felt that lyricism is fucking, you know, back in hip hop. It's not about just the vibe. It's about the fucking lyrics and the storytelling. Griselda, obviously, and then our next. Your swag guy, is preposterous. You smell like phosphorus. Not and that's doom on the motherfucking whatever. Yeah, Cheetos, Fritos, Doritos. Not the not <laughs> just the next dude, but also like that's why I was kind of surprised that the baby, who is very really lyrical. I don't. Yes, he's very lyrical. I don't know about um, that. And Megan, Megan is very much like. I mean, she. I don't know what her fucking word per minute count is. <laughs> But next up, in third place, first runner-up, 9%, Grammy Gibbs, Freddie Gibbs. Yes. this Your guy. Uh, uh, primarily off the strength of Alfredo with Alchemist, which is the only even remotely respectable rap album Grammy nominee of the year. Chuck's a fan. I'm a fan. We talked about this last week. I think that Gangsta Grammy Gibbs uh, is somebody who has a very – just kind of like us too, a very locked in a, a, a fan base that is, you know, l that loves him above all else and believes that he can do no wrong. And, and, and I know that that Gibbs delivers and the past between Bandana and Alfredo, he's definitely had an amazing, I would say, two years or and I guess Bandana came out in late 2019. But this was a guy in this category that. Only when the floodgates were opened up did he did he hit the top three. Yeah. So it's not the throw gang. It's it's really the general populace, which might speak to the Grammy nom, which yeah, is kind of like you know a, a, a more emblematic of the I mean, public he, opinion. He's had a long story career, you know, a lot of road bumps, um, hmm. which like maybe now he's kind of like finally getting exonerated, his exonerated, exonerated for sure. Um, but on the opposite side, a fucking you know went out, flamed out. Unfortunately, better to burn out than fade away. Better to burn out than fade away. Unlike Freddie Gibbs with the long story career, we have Pop Smoke. Yeah. Second place, eleven point four percent. Uh, the he was murdered in February. Yes. February, January. It was him and then Kobe. Kobe. Yeah. That's when we should have known over some Amir jeans. That's when we should have known that twenty twenty was the fucking most ass year in history. Pop Smoke owned. I feel like his uh, reign started last summer in New York mm -hmm. and continued throughout the whole year. The whole year on Hot 97. Any 100%. fucking car you uh, heard blasting music was pop. She want to fuck with the woo. Exactly. Uh, he, you know, whether it was like in the hood, on fucking TikTok, it was pop smoke. Yo, also, by I'm the way. That, I'm surprised you didn't win. And also, uh, honestly, dude, you know, the throw gang, you might want to fucking check yourself before you wreck yourself. He was not trending to the in, into the top three until we opened it up. That's on, a guys. fact. And uh, the lead for the wonderful, talented, apparently, because I've never heard any of her music. Really? Uh, our first, well, no, I have. But our first place winner was running away with this category. She was over 30% until Pop Smoke <laughs> ate into this. The ghost of Pop Smoke. Uh, first place, why don't you fucking throw it out? Fake nudes. Phoebe Bridgers, you, um, know. you know, sad boys stand up. Uh, chef, chef, you got it. You did it, baby. Yeah, but I think Congratulations. She, 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 d she does have this kind of rock star persona where not only is her music She's the very, cool T-Swizz. That's what people say. She's very cool. Uh, her lyrics are like next level. She does interesting things like, you know, covers Goo Goo Dolls with Maggie Rogers. Right. She's very funny. Yeah. She does like interest. She does like left field shit, like whether it's press. So she does have this kind of like rock star persona. Like, like, going, out, like going on corporate dunce. She... Fuck that. She called out Ryan <laughs> she called out Ryan Adams. Yeah. I don't know if that was twenty twenty or twenty nineteen. Um so she's like kind of this don't give a fuck, like very cool Silver Lake LA girl. Yeah. That I think a lot of our fans, myself included, must have like a crush on. Mm. Um and the music is un undeniably good. Yeah, no, I think that I think that's the point here is that Phoebe Bridgers is 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 undeniable. She is a newly minted A-lister from her, not just what she has done up, up until 2020, but the year that she had. And as far as the throw gang is concerned, this wasn't even close. And the only reason that Pop Smoke almost has this posthumous kind of run in the 50s is because, you know, we open this up to the wider populace. And, uh, and, 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 and listen, no one's mad at Pop Smoke right. getting love. R.I.P. Big Goat. Fucking everyone wants to fuck Big with woo. the woo. You know, shout out 
you know, everything that he did for drill music worldwide, even specifically in New York, if you want to be a fucking culture vulture. And, you know, Phoebe Bridgers is poised to be, I mean, she's, I mean, what year is she about to have, bro? I don't know. I mean, that's really, I mean, you're talking about. But she put out music early in the year and like it, it clearly held. And what, she, what, like, is her, what was she, her record called? I have no idea. She like kept, <laughs> she kept the momentum going throughout the year. Oh, dude. Let's move on to most stylish celebrity of the year, which was our hardest category to put together because there are no stylish celebrities. No, there's not. Um, it, it, this was a shallow pool. We, we scrounged together some fucking scraps. From the junkyard. I'm Yo, can I just say it. also, like, we didn't even have the John Mayer on here. And shout out my boy Kango. He hit me up day of when we dropped this survey to patrons on Patreon. He was like, no John Mayer. And you're almost like, oh, damn, right? Like, there was no opportunity for big celeb fit picks, really. Like, yep. yo, we talked about this. Frank Ocean didn't make this list because Frank had one Instagram in 2020. Sounds like me. And you, right. and you already know that, like, a, there's probably a lot of people Your that, boy. De- that deserve to be in this list but are not in this list. But let's start from the bottom up because we're not cops. <laughs> your most boy, stylish uh, celeb of your the year. Your boy, you, you were excited. You're like, yo, this guy has ze- literally zero votes. Punisher is the Phoebe Bridges record. Okay. Virgil Abloh. Dude, Virgil at a certain point. 12 votes. At a, <laughs> at a certain point. <laughs> out of, of 5,000. Out of us tabulating. He had no votes, which was notable because of every category. You were category. so excited. You're like, oh, my God. Virgil no, was no I, votes. I, can, I cannot wait to talk about this. Of every category, of every option, something had a vote. The only <laughs> thing that the only person, place, th- who, what, when, where, how, and why that didn't was Virgil at a certain point, I think until earlier today, he had no votes at all. And he tied with your <laughs> guy, Drizzy. Damn, Drake this, and Virgil, and they're boys, both bringing up the fucking rear at zero point three percent of the fitties votes. I will say just real quick, and I'm not gonna fucking, I'm, I'm not, I'm never here to cape for 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 the the certified loser boys personal style or anything outside <laughs> of loser. outside. I already made that joke earlier, so I'm happy you finally caught on. I'm not here to cape for anything outside of like what he represents as like what if the biggest loser. You knew got famous, which is awesome because that's got a nose job. which would be me. We got a nose job. I would also get go a nose look job. At, you really should. go look his go look his early. Videos. That's anti-Semitic. Um, well, anyway, you're, outside wait, you're, you're Jewish. <laughs> outside of outside of all that, um, I will say that Virgil and by extension Jerry as well. There is this idea that these guys that ultimately are the figureheads of not just fashion houses. Um, or fashion empires, but of like whole aesthetics, literally push it forward with their own personal style and the aesthetic that they kind of like just throw out on Instagram, which to me is the dream because that's all I want to be, right? I just want to be a, a fit pick icon. But, there. The, but I think there's th- that these guys deserve to be shouted out and deserve to be at least acknowledged. Well, that was the and argument. the fact that, that, that they the deserve, argument. the fact that I think they deserve acknowledgement but got so little love is a disconnect that maybe proves Whoa. that my brain is broken beyond No, that was the argument. It's like, yo, is, is Virgil a celeb? Is Jerry a celeb? And they're like, in our world, yes. And guess what? Jerry did better than arguably three of the biggest okay, fucking celebrities. Okay, okay, I'm sorry. Sidetrack. Virgil, side Drake, bottom. Ass. Ass crap. Less than a percent. Next up, kind of shockingly, although not when you take into account our audience. This is Travis bad. Travis Scott. One percent is embarrassing for this guy. Is a f- You know he just drops fit picks, right? Like, more so than Virgil or Drake. Bro. Travis is a fit pick guy. Then this upsets me, not just because, like, how little it was, but because of who's above him. Lil Uzi Vert, which I think, like, <sighs> I love the fact that this dude is always going just way over the top. Right. Everything's just like extra on extra. So extra. He walks in the store and says, I want two of everything. What do you say? No, what do you, he's the best at... Sh- and he dressed himself. He, no, I ain't got no stylist. Perky's in the privates. Uh, no, and that was uh, a, a Cardi leak that hopefully will make it to the, lu- the, the deluxe record. Lil Uzi Vert is better at shopping than anyone has been at anything ever besides yep. maybe Lionel Messi at soccer. All right, then we got Jerry. 1.5%. 1.5%. Just beating Jerry out at 1.6. A tie. His guy. Between Ye and Pharrell. That's his bad. Which Icons, like, bad year for Icons. And we'll say, yo, yeah. for, our guy might not be 
a Pharrell guy. Pharrell is always Pharrell because he hasn't fucking shot him his reputation in the fucking dick like fucking Yeezy has. Like Pharrell, this is em- this is embarrassingly low, and he had the skincare this year, and he continues to have the fucking Adidas shit, which is not as sexy to our guys. Probably uh, Pharrell Sh- Chanel, which is like kind of cool. There was loafers there, there was bangers there. That's Chanel doing menswear for the first time. That's iconic. That's important. But that happened in 2019. Pharrell is low. He lost, he lost Con- his. He lost his beard. Carl. Kanye. R.I.P. A dead bitch. Uh, Kanye is done. It's over. If he can't Correct. win this category, he can't. He's done. All right. The last. The last celeb between one and two percent. Playboy Cardi. Then we Gay jump vampire. up to three point one percent. Skepta, Big Smoke, just above him, three point two. ASAP Rocky, Rihanna's. Are, are you surprised thing. that this is so low? And is this because there was no new music and people are like not into the avant garde? Like, I think it's like a, a. It's a little. Every time he gets a fit off, it's like a very. It's very intentional, right? It's like oh, like I got studied. The pearls. Like, it's yeah, very it's studied. very. It's very extra. Oh, I got the fucking babushka. And what's the, the difference between him and Uzi? Uzi is more playful. Uzi, I think, is just like over the top. Rocky's like very much like, yo, look at my fit. St- Above Rocky, we got Dev okay. Hines. Very like low key. Yeah, under the and radar, great. Cool and, guy. And, and the fact that like, and you know what? Dev Hines doesn't need votes. He doesn't need any valid. Unlike a lot of the other people we've talked about, Dev Hines needs no validation from the fit. He's kind of like how I feel about Big Smoke. They have their lane. They fucking crush right. it. They do. Yo, Dev Hines had the biggest collab charity tea with Brain Dead of the entire year. Yeah. I mean, the spirit and soul that is in that, I think, really, if anything, props Dev's he's a taste huge, level. He's a huge uh, Lagache a, fan. Yeah, and it, and it props him up on a pedestal as a good guy. And let's just talk about like how much influence he's probably had over some of the other guys in this category who did a lot better, who we'll get to. Let's be real. Well, Is I'm not going to say... Source? I don't know, but he might be. I'm not going to say the next four cat uh, nominees are, you know, just, you know, white privilege, but we got Brad Pitt, whatever, great hair with the fucking flannel. Uh, we got Timothée Chalamet. Low. Which, and I love this. Wait, you thought Timothy was low? I thought he was... I thought he was way too high no, no. for what his fits have been. No, no. He's I, in one, two, three, seventh place. Seventh? Out of like Out of, like... 16, Okay, people. let's review. Brad Pitt, 6.3% because of the flannel and the cigs, and right? Hair. And the jeans and the hair. The sneakers were terrible. Timothée is at 7.8%. Timothée won GQ's fan-voted He's most hot. stylish celeb of the year. He's hot. Like, being hot is is uh, helps you being stylish, but being hot is not a substitute for being stylish. First of all, being hot, talk to Rick Owens, is everything. Being jacked is everything. Well, good being, fucking well body if you everything. can do it in the bod, great. And if you can do it in the face, spectacular. Timote deserves to be lower because his actual fits are garbage. I Trash. just love that the throw gang didn't fucking big up this guy for what he doesn't deserve, which is personal style. And yes, the red carpet fits, the hater fits are, and the and the Virgil and the LV yeah. fits are left field and weird and apparently he is involved in the creation of that whatever fucking jerk off press release you want to read i am happy he's low i thought yes. our boys would have been tricked and they weren't so shout him out love you he's Fuck low him. i'm glad he didn't he's not crack that top five but i think he should have been lower i think dev hines even fucking Skepta oh and like of course uzi i'm i'm, I'm so upset about uzi all right above timote we got john mayer a late entry super late who's entry. your guy kango kango shout, shout out kango, kango. For- uh, pointing out that we fucked up. We we had forgot the John the John Mayer, which is funny because we had Jonah on here, we had Ezra on here, and no again, Shia. We had no Shia. Well, <laughs> you know, that seems to be a bit intentional. All right, um, rounding but, out the top yeah. five, we got our boy Easy E Ezra. Yo, Ezra, I hear you like the that boots. was so Great. long. Um, <laughs> yeah, we're happy you love the boots, buddy. Ezra Koenig, number five at eight point six, and then our guy. Yeah, John. Finally hitting double digits. <laughs> not just I'm not saying him, just anyone hitting. I mean, it was a cl- it was a close category. Uh, a lot of entries. 
Jonah, Jonah Hill, got the TF bump here. Number four, ten point six percent. Would you say Jonah had a top five year? We don't. We don't really know. This was not Jonah's. Like twenty nineteen was the Jonah's year. That year. Jonah he stepped out. Yes. Right. 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 So. So. Right. Without the paparazzi picks and 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 the kind of you know the validation, even though it's gross to give paparazzi any credit because they are scum of the motherfucking earth. They killed your prince. They killed your princess. And if you and if you see them, you should assault them just like fucking yay, just like Alec Baldwin and his fake ass Spanish wife. Um, it was exposed by Avastagrad. Exposed. Um, yes, that's right. Your girl. Uh, that's a whole different pod for a different day. <laughs> All right. Uh, this was. This is too high for Jonah. But shout. But that's great. I mean, yeah. Shout out Jonah. But I think Jonah still got fits off. All right. Number All right, top three. three. I mean, he got his Adidas clap. Number three. Yes. Sure. Kind of the dude that really broke out in 2020 when it comes to like our universe yes. and like our aesthetic is yes. our guy ASAP Nas. And the, it's amazing. Yeah. That this guy's not a fucking rapper. And <laughs> well, you not, were like, not, not really well, you were anymore. just like, yo. I mean, there's questions of whether or not he should be even considered a celeb, and sure. he got third place and, like, yeah. destroyed his fucking mob comrade, Rocky. Yeah, whether or not ASAP Nast, you consider him a celebrity, depending on how, if you know, you know of a listener you are and how curated your IG following is. Uh, and whether or not he's even a rapper, ASAP Nast, designer, creator of Comme des Garcons, <laughs> uh, loafers, kilts, trousers... Uh, and sweater vests. Um, the true source, if you were to ask the source, uh, this is deserved. Um, and at the same time, I think if anything proves that the most stylish people, the people that truly drive culture in terms of fits and outfits, um, are primarily more behind the scenes than the average Absolutely. listener might think. Absolutely. Um, just eking him out by 0.1%. This is crazy. Which he was number one yeah. until we opened it up, and then white privilege took over. Uh, number two, at 11.9%, Tyler, the creator. Yeah, this is funny. Nast publicly came after Tyler early this year, and they're boys, and it's all playful. And Nast also uh, talk about fucking delusions of He's grandeur. Like, you, stole my, you, stole my, you swagger jack me? On, on, on a lot of stuff, and it's hilarious to me to think that Nast would go to sleep at night thinking that he has this kind of influential power over his boy Igor. But either way, the fact that Nast beat him by point one is kind of beautiful poetic justice. And rounding out yeah. most out of the year, another homoerotic gentleman. We got our boy Ari. Ari Styles. I mean, who again was not leading until no. he broke it open to the unwashed masses. And whether it was because he had that moment where he, you know, covered sure. first male uh, on the cover of Vogue. Right. Big. Wore the big? wore the dresses. Yeah, big, but also like that's a fucking press stunt by Vogue. Like, yeah, that's, that's some culture. Moment. That's some culture war bullshit, as a lot of things are. He wear, he, this he had, age, he, you know, he has the contract with Gucci. Like he's fitting right. Gucci the whole time. Although he did wear a lot of non Gucci fits and Johns in that story. And did uh come out as like a vintage uh pat a Gucci head, yeah. which is fire. The, the non-style, that, that's the thing, the non-red carpet, the non-style, the non-editorial fits are big, and that's not completely out of left field for him, right? You, you're talking about the jogging fits in fucking yeah. Italy, the vintage Patagonia, the right fucking running shorts, uh, the right kind of like running one sneakers. Yeah, the, the, the fucking point eight, the point eight inch seam. Uh, yo, shout out Harry. He does not deserve to win this category. No. Uh, he it lost been Tyler, Harry. We love you, bro. Sure, come on the pod. Right. But Harry did one. lose to Timote in GQ's bullshit. Or no? Oh wait, no. Actually, I'm wrong. Harry won and beat Timote in GQ's bullshit. Uh, uh, fan, do you think more people voted in our shit than their shit? Probably, yeah. right? Yeah. I would say probably, <laughs> but but that's so. So let, just a little correction there. Um, interesting category that shook out, kind of like you expect. That doesn't mean though that it's correct. I would be uh, interested in maybe next year if the fifties continue, and, and the the fact that they were a runaway success means that they are. Is sure. if we did like biggest kind of like you know behind the scenes stylish icon mm. of the year. I like that. Is. Like uh, like a. Uh, the if you know you know st- sor- source of the year like yo source yo source, source of, of the, the year. year like all the dudes at Pesco uh, talked about on the episode coming out on Tuesday. Source, Speaking of GQ, of let's move on to biggest bozo of the year, the most contentious 
category per the people with the most with, with talking about an embarrassment of riches. Yeah. And you and I are not even on this list. I know we should have been. Um, it there was an obvious winner. But sure. I think People were like, yo, I don't want to vote for like the obvious one. Well, you even were like, I don't want to, because we were like, I was like, yo, we got to throw on fucking Cuomo. We got to throw on Schumer. And you're like, yo, yo, pump the brakes. There's so many politicians. Right. And and also. Embarrassment of riches. Exactly. Right. So Uh, so this is truncated. I'm going to run through this real quick. So bring up the rear, 0.4%. Kim Kardashian West. uh, Lawyer to be. (laughs) Yeah. Next up, Chris Pratt. I guess his his, like fuck ups were kind of like internet, uh, you know, first. Then the destroyer of democracy, Mark Zuckerberg. Sure. I, I cannot believe he was, you know, third to last. People piece. love Facebook, apparently. Then my bows of the year, Elon Musk. Yep. Uh, just eclipsing him, the last woman on the. Well, I guess there's women cops. Uh, women, woman on biggest bows of the year, Nancy Pelosi. Straight fucking ghoul, a ghouless. Then you know she's she's a uh, Judith Bloom or whatever. Yep. Uh, next up, I guess this is a kind of like New York City centric, fucking Mayor Bill De Blasio. Fuck him. Next up, Lord Bezos, also mm. tied with de Blasio. Uh, after that, we got Philip Pline. Right now, 4.3% with Philip Pline. After that, we got Bozo, but also kind of the goat. Yeah, man, Wagwan, <laughs> me boy. A big pussy bite. Big pussy boy, Chet Hanks. That was not even Jamaican accent at the end there, but um, yeah, Chet Hanks. The go- but, all, but, but, also but also the, the goat, God. though. 5.4% Kanye West. Kanye kind of had a quiet second half of 2020. He had a, he had a great bozo second act. Yes. Well, I Quietly. think no, I think he, I think he, <laughs> no, no, he had a he, he he is all year, yeah. Uh next he pulled we got up the, the fucking uh the the tortoise. Yeah, the tortoise majority himself. leader Mitch McConnell. The man who will live forever despite everything yeah. and who will always get reelected. Everything is purple, especially his hands. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. Yeah. Fucking Mitch McConnell 5.9% all right, top five bows of the year. Dave Portnoy, six point two percent. And you know that's and that's and that's the throw gang standing up. Listen, people forget that just because twenty twenty was five years long, we came out of the gate hot because of how you and I got our shit fucking stuffed by El Presidente to basically close out 2019, but even kind of open up 2020. And I'd like to think that despite all of the good that Dave Portnoy is doing for small businesses Bro, right mind, now. I a little taste t- of that 10 taking, million. <laughs> taking a little taste of that Portnoy stimmy. Taking a page even out of our fucking quarantine handbook, I will say that that felt like that's a Homer, that's Homer love for the boys. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, uh, Throw so, Gang, so for you know, you. circling the wagons. Yeah. Um, speaking of which... Late stage capitalism, number four as a as a concept, I guess. You yeah, know, like I think, I, I, yeah, this shit shit is ass. Which is always ironic coming from a show that is about John's copping Johns and and, and, and how and how and copping Johns can can make you a better person. Right. And top three change your life. Top three. Yeah, here you go. Here you go. Here bozos go. of the year. Yeah. Uh, everything that we talked about was beneath. Nine percent. Sure. The first, no double digit. The first nominee to enter double digits. Cops. Pigs. Yeah. 11.9%. Um, yeah, all cops are bastards. You know the fucking motto. Fuck them all. Uh, there is no such thing as a good police officer because if you are a police officer, you are a part of the fucking problem. Quit your fucking job unless you are a cop who subscribes to our sp- Patreon <laughs> and you need salary to pay us. Right. Uh, you're ultimately kind of circumventing the system to empower a Jew and a POC to be small business owners, at which point we appreciate it. We love you. But yeah, fuck cops. Then we get into, you know, laddering up in oh. law and order. Fucking yeah. our guy, Rudy. Rodolfo Rudy. Giuliani. Yeah. Um, I don't know if my, is my mascara running. This guy, honestly. This yo, guy came had, in. He came. Yo, what a fucking. Talk this guy about stop fucking up. Talk this guy about not cl- stop bozoing it, bro. This talk about a cl- yo. We need to bring in a closer. <laughs> this guy's yo, bo- Mariana you, Rivera. The, bozo the Borat. The Borat shit isn't even like in the convo of the, of of all the shit that in a, in that a, that a, closed the year out. In a six week period, he farted big time in like a Michigan courthouse. Love he that. had the the Borat shit where he tried to jerk off on a fifteen year old girl. Love reporter. that. 
And then he had his fu- he did the four, four seasons, seasons four seasons landscape the four seasons massacre he had the fucking he had, he had the the great melting the, the, yeah he he climate change affected his fucking dome piece still talking about the election being stolen getting fucking you know turned down in every fucking court across honestly, the land the for being mo- a best fucking sports idiot moment, best sports moment of 2020 or honestly best New York sports moment is whenever he's shown on the jumbotron at a Yankees oh, and game. Yeah. And the entire fucking booed. stadium just boos the just shit out booed, of him. Yo, booed out of the motherfucking galaxy. There's only one bozo that yeah, can I mean, trump this is, Giuliani, know, this is, and that's that is Trump. Donald. That's Trump. his boss. Um, which that's is his like, fucking boss. There's, there's nothing to say. Either, right? The final boss of all motherfucking clowns. Uh, one a quarter of the vote, tw- full twenty five percent. Yeah, that's. I mean, that's. I mean, who do you vote for? I don't know if I voted for. I might have voted for like because uh, oh. I knew I knew Trump was gonna win. So I'm, I might have voted just for like my guy, my right. personal bozo of the year, Elon Musk. I definitely voted for Trump, and I will say that, um, and, and we could go back and double check because I know we only shut the, we shut the tabulations off, uh, you know, because we are a Price genre house Cooper. Maybe five minutes before we started recording, but I believe that bozo of the year got the most votes of any category. And and was the most hotly contested on the Discord at least. W- was the most hotly contested on the Discord. Um, it, was the, it was the year of the bozo. And well, every year is the year of the bozo. And I think that this one, I mean, listen, there's a lot of great options, uh, but it's very clear, uh, especially now with all the fucking stimmy debate and how Trump is going out with a whimper and not a bang. Uh, to use a f- to borrow a phrase we've used already on this episode, um, this was a no surprise. A quarter of the votes in the most popular category. Of course, it's going to be Don. And to of course, be fair, it's be Don. to be fair, I mean, Jimmy on. and Larry were not nominees, no, so you thank know, God. that could have swayed the vote to you know we we could have gotten a quarter of the vote. I bet you, and I bet you, we would have won. All right, let's move on to the category you've all been waiting for. Is that your drum roll? That's a, that's a drum roll. Did that pick up? Did that, that pick was, up? That was terrible. Um, all right. <laughs> I tried. Brand of the year. A lot of surprises and some expected, uh, you know, front runners here. But let's start from the bottom. With 0.5% of the vote, <laughs> 5,000 votes from the throw gang, the, th- the throwing fits extended universe. Do Louis, the math. Louis Vuitton. Virgil. It, the, it, for our guy, Virgil is walking around with an L tattooed yeah. on his forehead. His fucking like ass that, is hanging like, out. Like that fucking Drake fan uh, from many moons ago, uh, who is really an icon and a visionary in her own in her own respect. Uh, yeah, no, our we Virgil and Louis, despite getting all of the hype beast headlines, despite fucking getting lines around the block for whatever fucking stupid. A uh, five thousand dollars skate shoe that was designed. Right. Like no one really cares when it comes down to it. Well, okay. what to he fair, is doing, and I think be, that is emblematic of his customer. To be fair, last year was the year that Louis, uh, you know, appointed Virgil when he had like Cardi and Cuddy on the runway when he fucking put, you know, when it was like he was appointed as the first black. That was American, last year. I think so. Was it not? I don't know. It might have been older. Either way, either, either way, either way, uh, the whatever, honeymoon whatever's period going on, whatever's has going on, ended. Whatever's going exactly. Whatever's going on in eighteen nineteen has cooled down, and I don't know. Like, I, I think also if you look at the, it's quiet I mean, out if, here for Virgil Abloh. If we go through the whole list, you'll see that like high fashion houses are at the bottom, and regardless of the fact that they dominate the headlines because they pay for the most expensive PR houses, yes. companies to get the fucking blog posts. To make news out of everything, but despite the fact that the zoo borders are just reposting all their imagery, yeah, that is not who the throwing fits consumers into, and that's I, fine. Whether it's price, right. whether it's the fact that it's fucking yeah. corny and you know meant for this like nouveau riche, late stage capitalism consumer, who's to say? Moving on up, though. Well, hold on, one, one final point about Virgil. I think that when people talk about Virgil, they go, okay, yeah, Off-White, everyone knows, is fucking cooked. It's over. And sure, the Nike collabs fucking hit and sell out, and a lot of that is due to fucking uh, hypebeast carpetbaggers trying to resell that shit. But a lot of people say, hey, but listen, look what Virgil is doing for Louis. Look what he's doing on the fucking runway. Look what he is doing and how he is remaking this high fashion house in his image. And I'm not here to argue with that because that is important in terms of representation and identity politics snore. But when it comes to the fucking showdown, when it comes to the votes, 
nobody, at least in our little fucking universe that we have created expertly, we have curated perfectly, gives a fuck. And maybe that's because we have done too good of a job. I mean, but then you going up one at 0.6% of the vote. Uh, this is a big shocker, honestly. Really? Yeah. Yeah. No, seriously. Supreme. No one cares. Second to last. Okay. I guess it depends how you vote for brand of the year, right? Is it your personal favorite or is it the brand that had the biggest year? Supreme sold for two point one billion. But that was the headline, right? Billion, what I, what I told billion you. dollars. What noise did they make out? The, and the Air Force One is interesting, and I know I did my whole fucking spiel Yoji, at the beginning. Yoji collab, Lambo yeah. collab, fucking, uh, I don't know. It's the same. That's it. Here's the thing. Supreme is so consistent, right? The North Face collabs hit. The Nike collabs hit. Now they do the high fashion collabs. This year it was Yoji. The shit hit. Uh, they sold for $2.2 billion. The flip was in. The fix was in. They, they fucking did the damn thing. But just because they fucking dominated that headline didn't mean that their relevance really well, hit in terms of this category, absolutely. which is, I think, why they are at the absolute fucking seller. Are you still going to stand them in 2021? Of course, always. All right. Undefeated. Uh, moving on up. Okay, honestly, this might have surprised me more than Supreme. Balenciaga, 0.7%, third to last. Yeah. Balenciaga... They had the like, video juegos, but outside of that, like... I don't know. Balenciaga, I feel like, is... Oh, like, the, the video game is cool. Um, I think that no, Balenciaga is always just, like, at least making more headlines than, like... The people you see above them. I mean, yes, Probably. they're a fucking, you know, what do you call them? Exchange student? Foreign exchange student fashion? Race shit. Um, <laughs> next up, Palace. Yeah, I mean, this is, we, we threw this in as like a, okay, well, let's, okay. Palace and Arcteryx is interesting and, you know, Arc will come up later in this category. So we, we threw Palace on here. They got some votes. Uh, this is not that surprising. We can move on. Yeah, I feel like this was not the year for like big streetwear brands, right? No. So next up, um, speaking of which, Fear of God. Though I'm just realizing we didn't include Stone Island in here. Well, I yeah, because it would have rated. Because it's also like, yo, what happened besides the fact that they just sold? They got, like, a, you know, they got acquired. Up All right, sure, fair. Do so sure. Fear of God uh, pulled very low, even though Jerry did respectably, especially with '90s tailoring, which I think that they were the vanguard of. Sure. Uh, but they tied at 1.1% with Gucci. Yeah, it Gucci also is just like, degree. Gucci's just fucking I tired. wonder if we blew it by not having Jiven Givenchy, I was going to say, Givenchy, 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 and uh, Alix and Matthew Williams, the executive producer of Whole Lot of Red. Uh, no, you know my no. twin's got a classic? Yo, you know my twin about to, my twin's going to drop a classic. Um, people don't care about high fashion in, in our world. Bro, is next that clear? Up, next up is Rick Owens. Damn. Rick is like a ma like Rick. I think transcends you know high fat. He's like a mainstay. He's like and we love Rick. Yeah, he like I, whatever. He's fucking body goals, <laughs> furniture goals, needles. Damn, who is nothing but consistent. Sure, but had a quiet year. Beat out Rick Owens, but I needles just, also at one point four percent. Oh really? Yeah, bottom half of the category. So it's crazy to think that. Well, okay, is it crazy to think that the throw gang? prefers, respects, enjoys whatever, whatever metric you want to use, needles more than Rick, whether it was... Well, it's more accessible for sure. So in 2020 like, or more. That's that's a little surprising. especially. You know, but you know more people that own needles than own Rick. Of course, of course, especially yeah. in our world. And, and guess what? Now, let's close out the one percenters, Dior, 1.9%. Well, Dior, like, Dior and Prada are the last two like fashion houses, and they closed... Yeah, they clocked out at 1.9 and 2%. And they both had big years, right? Like, Dior collabed with Sean Stussy who has nothing to do with Stussy itself, who will come up later, and who famously, like, hates on Stussy uh, and who thinks that it's actually not the 40th anniversary right. if you if you check his you know, uh, you know. his Instagram. Um, so Dior and obviously had the Jordan collab and Kim Jones. Kim Jones. Is Kim Jones, but ultimately disappointing. And then Prada, who, uh, who hired Raph to come in-house in an unprecedented co- Creative directorship with the goddess Muchia Prada. Oh, yeah. This is something that I thought would hit our guy harder. I keep we keep talking about our guy all night because you know we you and I have our expectations of what's going to hit, what's going to fail. I thought this would be higher. Also, not interested. I'm not surprised that Prada did not beat anyone above them. Raph Simmons, um, Rick Owens, usually what I don't give a fuck about. Yeah, but Raph is fucking a snooze fest at this point. 
<sighs> That's a big claim, Honestly, my G. The next, f- the next brand at three point three percent, I thought was going to be fucking oh, higher. Yeah. And this Much is more higher. like this is more like if you were to view it objectively as like you know visibility, uh, pop culture references, Chrome Hearts, Chrome three point three percent, Chrome Hearts tags all year. Yeah, this is uh, this was the sad rock star brand of the year. Sure. Right? Right, and and we tried to include Chrome here. We kind eighth, of eighth place, and we 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 included them. Well, in our minds, we had included them with the sad rock star trend. We might have been able to be, we could have been rather more explicit, and we weren't. And it's almost as if listen, Chrome was the focus of what ninety five percent of our memes. Yeah. But also, I think that as a meme as a meme account who has a podcast, and yet you know, we I don't know. Honestly, can I say I don't think we did Chrome justice in terms of representation in the fifties because they should be higher because they were that they were that fucking dude. Yo, is it weird that I kind of I don't know if it's like just like you know. Uh, constantly memeing it, like right. I kind of want some Chrome Hearts. I want twenty twenty one. You and me both, brother. And I feel like maybe if we were able to somehow bring in John of the Year, that is such a specific thing to every voter, and we could have kind of like boiled it down to, let's say, a weird Chrome accessory, whether it was a mousetrap, a cutter. plunger, uh, pizza a pizza cutter. cutter, whatever. Like maybe that would have won the category, and it would have done. Like what we said earlier about like, hey, listen, this brand we're gonna throw well, maybe that it's like, bone. Maybe it's like troll the Travis years, like, Scott. We're gonna throw yeah. him the bone with McDonald's. Maybe Chrome would have done better, but damn, weird. All right, we Love. finally get back into respectable. Although eh, they kind of had their hiccups in twenty twenty. Uh, Noah, five point two percent. You want my take here? Yeah. Listen, Noah and what they represent year in and year out is always about integrity and causes and what I feel like. Brendan wanted to represent Except for that one time at Supreme that didn't allow him to. What was, what do you mean that one time? They uh, did some fucking you know superficial BLM statement and they got called out by Patia mainly. Oh, that's right, I did see. And that. then their response was some fucking bullshit and they got called out on that and sure. it just like kind of snowballed. Okay. Well, and they finally like, all right, we're gonna donate you know I don't know like a paltry sum of money to some cause. So. There was that, but like what beyond that, I, I will. Th- s- I think Noah Noah has the the a very. St- it's not like growing in leaps and bounds. Not a hockey stick. But it's a very like nice trajectory sure. of like. It's cool. Visibility. Prep. It's cool. Um, prep development. Yeah. The prep shit, I fucking hate. I know. I know. Okay, listen. Noah is the coolest prep that you can fucking get, and I understand that it is a beautiful, delicious alternative to Supreme. My thought there, all the the the. And, and I think what you just said is kind of what I'm building up to is that I think in a year like 2020 where even throwing fits is like, yo, we've got a BLM fucking raffle happening every week. We're trying to do our best. We're trying well, to message it. Not every week. <laughs> not every week. And we're trying to message it in a way that is sincere and real and not fucking Fugazi and not fucking Fugazi. I think that Noah might have overplayed their hand. And to some people that might have been fans of the brand in in, in prior years, they might have seen it as heavy handed and performative. And I think that they might have uh, that might have been used as a way to kind of push them down. And it was used to kind of I mean, you know, be detrimental against the brand. Yes, fair, but I also think that uh, Brendan is, uh, I don't know, he's kind of like a, you know, he's not like putting himself at the forefront no. of the brand. I think that Brendan I'm just speculating. is a very fucking cool, interesting, thoughtful dude. Um, it's almost wild that like Noah has, or like Noah's PR has like, you know, leveraged that, but you know, whatever. Do like, they even not- have PR, right? Like who is even to say? They do. Um, all right. Next up after Noah is my brand of the year. Yeah. Our Degache, this is which low. was pulling higher until we opened it up. Mm. Degache, they got I think, buried. is 5.6%. 5.6%. Like, although, when you look at the brands above them, like the brands above them are like have so much more visibility. Legache does fucking play low key. I think that this was a year, like we talked about with the Critics' Choice Awards, where it's like, you know, smooth brains, mainstream, like they yourself, blew. finally understood what the fuck has been going on for the past decade since like 2006. Yeah. Uh, Six, I believe. Um, and you're like, oh, this makes sense. And this is exactly in line with everything that is happening now and where everything's happening, you know, in the future. Um, 5.6% though. 
So respectable, whatever. but respectable. but a little low. Respect- but only because, like you said, we opened it up. Respectable, but I'm also like not surprised. Yeah. If you look at the brands above them, it's like big fucking household. All names. right, let's get through some of the next ones real quick. Brain dead, six point seven percent. Brain dead, I think, was also lagging before we opened it up. And yeah, I do think that if you didn't step back and look at the entire landscape of 2020, you might have missed Brain Dead. Yeah, I think Brain Dead is the weird example that is the opposite of a lot of what we've been talking about as far as like trends in a lot of these categories where Brain Dead was underperforming with the throw gang, which is weird because we just had Kyle yeah. on an instant blastic pod. Insane person in where, the best way possible. Where the case of why Brain Dead is such an amazing thought leader in the streetwear space, like it couldn't be more clear that this is who you want to invest in, not just in Kyle as a person, but in the collective that he is the figurehead of. And weirdly, when it was opened up, it finally kind of performed better. It was almost the reverse. And then after that, we have Arky. We got Arcteryx, yeah. Dead Bird, 7.3%. This is a trend. This is this is on the coattails of Gorp. And while Patagonia, you and I decided not to include because Patagonia, we feel, is timeless. Arcteryx is included because this was the year they leaned into what everyone that was a fan of them in an if-you-know-you-know way had kind of already been feeling, which is like, listen, this is the coolest, best Gorp shit uh, why won't you almost acknowledge it as a brand or, or and not why some pe- I'm sure a lot of fans were, were, were happier when it was under the radar, but the collabs this year, Palace, most no, they, notably they, with all the artists, they fucking put their nuts on the table and they yeah. they kind of they it was almost like our debut. We're here. No, it was uh, it was like, yo, we're not going to fight the fact that like, right. we're becoming a cool guy brand. We're going to embrace it. Sure. And, uh, in more, a good be, way, in a good inclusive way. Inclusive of the fact that right. people are in a good us. way, and not to not to be a big things coming type of guy, but oh, you know. yeah, we might have we might have some spicy content coming up. Um, right. Top three. Here we go. This and this is this is great. I love this. This is awesome. Although this changed. first runner up was not in the running for permutated. the top three, it permutated it. The category permutated permeated. No, this different. this brand Permutated. was in the single digits and na- and ended up at thirteen point one percent of the vote. The Juicy Stussy. Stussy. I mean, Stussy's back, baby. I mean, we've Stupid been back. We've we talked. We've ta- we have been talking about it since the previous podcast endeavor that shall not be named, and that is why you and I get paid to do what we do because we saw it coming. And yes, Stussy has a right. Yo, the fortieth anniversary suite of collaborators. Was Chef's Kiss some I mean, better than others, the, but the it was colla- all well done. The collabs are what got the headlines. Whether it was Wagache, fucking collab CDG. of the year, CDG, no vacancy in Ricky, Rick, uh, Off White, the soloist, Off White. Um, yeah, that whole capsule of teas, like that's what got the headlines. But any time you go to a Stussy drop, there is a fucking There's John. Bangers. There's always John that you want to get, and yeah. because they're so 100%. big. It's affordable. It's yeah. accessible. It is touching on Gorp. It's touching on Surf. It's touching on West Coast, East Coast, streetwear, like skate, whatever. It's everything. Stussy is for the fucking people. Uh, this listen, all person. If you were to remove all personal biases that you would have from this category, I would argue that nobody deserves it necessarily more than Stussy, this win. But they're in third place with 13.1% of the vote, and they uh, they caught up. They, the people, the people, yeah. the people, people spoke. raised them up. All right. The runner-up of the 2020 this is interesting. brand of the year. Yeah. It was closer. So it was, it, it was, was neck, very close. It was neck and neck. And then, uh, and you and I were almost hoping that it would turn to the underdog because that would have been something right. that we could have. I would honestly direct say we directly contributed to, and we could have put a feather in our cap. The winner ended up running away with it, uh, with a third of the vote. But the runner-up with fourteen point five percent of the vote, yeah, our boy, the guy that killed <laughs> that killed the pre- that me. kills everything he touches besides um, this eighteen east. Antonio Changoli, a.k.a. my boy, my motherfucking man. This was truly Kenny. their fucking breakout year. Yeah. Um, you know, obviously we're not going to claim credit or anything, but it's like no, I, 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 I've, on, I've heard that uh, after he came on the pod, the foot we, traffic to the store increased 
1,000-fold. A previous podcast endeavor that shall not be named, that Antonio so justifiably murdered in cold blood with his bare hand. The kiss of death. That was right at the end of 2019. You knew it was us, Sonny. We, we, we were early, as we always are. We put him on a pedestal that was more deserved than any fucking pedestal that anyone has been put on. And how fucking nuclear and into the stratosphere this man and his team and his brand fucking shot into. This was so close. And we were texting with Antonio. We were like, bro, right now you are potentially poised to be the brand of the year. He was blown away. It would have been a fucking sick moment that speaks to... An upset. Like a, a, a scrappy underdog upset. It was like 24%. And it would have been... And, and I think it would have been like metaphorical for like, yo, the platform that we had before that was a little bit more lamestream was deaded and we moved forward. We emerged like a fucking butterfly from a motherfucking cocoon. And just because we're smaller doesn't mean that we're not better. And it doesn't mean that we can't put on those who deserve it. But ultimately, once we opened this shit up, yeah. he got fucking killed. All right, so <laughs> he got with, fucking murdered. With, with a full, Kenny, we love you, but damn, dude. With a full one third. Yeah. With a 5,000 32.9%. This is, I mean, come on. Runaway brand of the yeah. year, as decided by uh, the 5,000 voters mm -hmm. at home and around the globe. Our boy, Teddy Santis. Shout out to Teddy. Neon, duh. Brand of the year. The Fitties trophies on the way. There um, was, this is, this is, I mean, this was a, is this the biggest, what are we talking about? This is the biggest win, right? No, I think, I think or Legace, there might be, Stussy oh, Legace, Legace, but, yeah. but this was like, but for such a, a this, this for the, the biggest category, this, was, this is a blowout. This was the closest, and then they fucking, he, they just ran away with it. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I, mean I, I guess what, like, what can we say? What can we say that we didn't say big, last week? Big, that I said last week. Big collaborations. Yep. That uh, Winter Lookbook with um, Your boy. a bunch of New York rappers and uh, a fat Jew. Not the fat Jew, <laughs> but a fat Jew. No, Fuck so, you. Not, you're no longer fat. Um, that <laughs> a was previously cool. fat, a former fat Jew and his dog. I think that is it is very much like both aspirational and accessible. Yes, like, Yo, that is the sweet this spot. This is where you want to be at, yep. and where you can, can easily be at. be at by just join taking us. like two or three steps forward. Join us, join us on the dark side or on the on the on the white side. Um, yeah, and yeah, well deserved. Yeah, you and I might never truly agree on how many pieces a man should wear from ALD. At any given time, oh, whereas for you it's it's one it's the, it's the and wally. it's wall no, it's two. It's the right wally, and right, the, left the wally. right wally. And for me, it's going to be more. And obviously, as we've said or I've said a billion times, those are friends, those are family. But I I will I I will say that Teddy, I think, come on the pod. Yes, Teddy, please come on the pod. I think that we're on the same page in that ALD represents a lot of. Or, a lot of the good things, the majority of the good things that you and I are trying to preach right. day in and day out. And whether or not, like, you know, the vibe or the extent, the aesthetic changes or, or, or you know, our, our, the ethical approach to dressing changes in 2021, as far as the year that was, this is the fucking bullseye. This is the fucking this, sweet spot. This was grown man streetwear personified yes. in a tasteful way that. I'd like to think is approachable in terms of price point, which is an argument because the shit ain't as cheap as it might have been right. when we when we were first fucking cracking this fucking can back at Complex and Four Pins. But ultimately, uh, there seemingly is no doubt whatsoever. ALD brand of the year, almost one, th almost nearly one third percent of the vote, um, which is a lot. Yeah, undeniable. Um, yeah. Can't argue with the fucking voters. The people have spoken. The Fitties 2020 first annual Fitty yeah. Awards are shut down. Shut down, Thank eh? To all the voters. Trust Thank you to me, all daddy. The patrons. And yo, yo, real quick, just special shout out to, uh, I don't know, just everyone that's, I don't know, contributed and helped out yeah. in our first year of existence. We just, we, we just got a very good, I ain't reading all that, but I'm happy for you or I'm. Um, Lord, I <laughs> quit our jobs yeah. to fucking set up some ring lights in my living room and uh, talk some shit on some vinos for two hours and two minutes. Yeah, we killed this. We were um, worried it wasn't going to be long enough. Yo, thank you guys for rocking with us for all 2020. Lawrence, any last words for the Throw Gang as uh, we start 2021? Said it before. Say it. Say it. We'll say Big it again. It's coming. 
Um, yeah, always big things coming. Uh, you and I have a privilege that we get to do this for not just our living, but like we make a substantial amount of money. We're not going to pretend like, you know, you guys don't fucking juice us up. And, uh, yo, it's a privilege. We try not to take it for granted and we love and appreciate you. And we hope you had a fucking great year, uh, which you probably didn't. But, uh, if we could bring even the littlest amount of joy or escape, We've done our fucking job. The job we are arguably not qualified for, but the job that we have chosen to do, the hill we have chosen to die on, and uh, we appreciate you guys being along for the ride. And, yeah, I mean, hopefully next year will be better in a variety of ways, and at the very least, we, we love and appreciate the throw game. Or at least, you know, drop some fire memes. All right, yeah. Chef, slap that. Uh, chef, slap that motherfucking outro music. Chuck, uh, do your premiere shit, because I guess you're our video guy now. They thought we were gay! <laughs> Mike check. Cop a lot, but never cop no drop. Hold mics like ponytails tight and bobble out.